What is up, everybody, and welcome to the WAN Show! We've got a great show for you guys this week, of course. The big news is the big change in Twitch's terms of service. Naturally, since we do stream on Twitch, this is going to have a big impact on the WAN Show, where finally... We're going to be able to do all the things we've always <laughs> wanted to do. We've got fuzzy handcuffs, we've got... Silicone nipple covers. I really don't know what this had to do with anything. Huh. But we've also got other oh more different nipple covers. Oh, yeah. Oh, jeez. Also, today, <laughs> I don't know what else is. Oh. <laughs> How do you transition off that? <laughs> Epic finally won something. That's right. A jury has sided with Epic in their lawsuit against Google, agreeing that Google used anti-competitive business practices. We'll be talking a little bit about that. And what else we got? Did I manage to pick your two again? Uh, you did. Go uh, Linus! AMD says overclocking is still okay, despite saying that overclocking is not okay. Yeah, it's complicated. It's weird. It's actually very complicated. It is, I don't actually. understand it. I would I would be confused if I was trying to do that. Uh, also, you can't check who's monetized on YouTube anymore. Yeah. So Which on the weird. surface, I can kind of see how maybe that's not that big of a deal. But the deeper you go, the more insidious it appears to be. Bah. <laughs> The show is brought to you by iFixit, SignalWire, and V1 Tech. Wow. <laughs> I, I wasn't fast enough to actually you get the like things. You look like you're okay. bringing medical supplies. To... Do, you, do you want the silicone covers or do you want the X's? Either oh, is an man. option. They... Wow. I didn't know we were actually doing this. Uh, I don't care, I think. Do you want to rock, paper, scissors or something? Sure, yeah. We can rock, paper, scissors. Is there a more like lewd version of rock, paper, scissors that uh, we should do? I mean, you could have... Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's a little early in the show to... Uh... <laughs> You, know, you could have, what, penises, vaginas, and... <laughs> wow, none I, of that was censored. <laughs> he did not press the button. Those aren't bad words. That's, those are body parts. That is There's nothing wrong with true. them. Yep. Okay, so, uh... <laughs> don't worry, we're going to talk about the aspects of it that Twitch has rolled back. We're, we're going we're gonna to get into it, but first, oh we need to choose what we're going to be wearing. Yeah. Okay, rock, paper, scissors. Let's just stick with rocks, papers, and which, scissors. Which one are we going for? Uh, yeah, you got you to gotta decide. Which which one do you get if you win? I don't, Dan, choose. Uh, Winner gets which? Uh, if uh, Luke wins, he gets the silicone. Okay. 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 What? Uh, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Two, what is your... Yeah, I mean, yeah, technically, yeah. I won. Nah. I, I nah. mean, I'm pretty sure the people all saw that I just won. <laughs> I did? Okay, it doesn't, okay, so rock, paper, scissors, shoot? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors, huh. All right, I guess I won. So which one? Sorry, I don't remember, I don't remember. what I was fighting for. <laughs> uh, so you get the X's then, I think? All right. Because if Luke won, he got the silicon. Okay. Wait. So then Luke gets the same thing regardless of the outcome? Oh, no, sorry. I'm not sure if I follow... <laughs> I don't think he saw who won. I think uh, he just guessed. So, then, Linus, you uh, you get the silicon. Oh, I get the silicon. Sorry, I forgot the rule that I set okay. five seconds earlier. Wow, 100% silicone. Very cool. Does it actually, like, stick on? Is it, is it adhesive? I have no idea, Luke. Does this look like the kind of thing I've used before? <laughs> Don't answer that on this show. I wonder if they look good or like over your eyes. <laughs> nah, that's like some nightmare fuel right there. Just, like, go, to, go to Linus. Hello! Man. Eyeless man. <laughs> look at you some type of like bee or something. Yeah. <laughs> this is great Bernie in float plane chat says it looks like a chicken fillet. We're doing it? Yeah, I mean. Okay, okay. We're not even okay. covering anything. It's not lewd. What do you put? Are you at? Oh, you're just putting on your shirt. Okay. Yeah, whatever. It's not a big deal. I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to tell how far you're wanting to go with something. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we have safe words. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does HR watch the land show? I was talking to Nick Light about that. Apparently not. Oh, okay. Well, that's probably a good thing. Uh, we both decided the same. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man! All right. So while he's working on that, uh, Twitch allows then bans the drawing of broobs. <laughs> if I say a word that's not even a word, then no one can get mad at me for it, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, there's lots of sources for this, but two days ago, Twitch adjusted its terms of service to allow artistic depictions of nudity, such as drawings or sculptures of breasts, buttocks, and genitalia, as long as the content was correctly labeled. Depictions of sex acts were still excluded. Twitch likewise broadened its policy to allow content that deliberately highlights breasts, buttocks, or the pelvic region, including body writing and body paint on breasts and buttocks. Oh. Nudity, however, was still prohibited. Today, Twitch reversed the new policy following a massive wave because who could have seen this coming? <laughs> of lewd art that fell both within <laughs> and outside of the policy's oh. new scope. Twitch stated, and this is a quote, much of the content created has been met with community concern. There, these are concerns we share. Upon reflection, we have decided that we went too far with this change. Digital depictions of nudity present a unique challenge. Yeah. AI can be used to create realistic images, and it can be hard to distinguish between digital art and photography. I don't even think that's the biggest of the issues, but sure. The change was an apparent response to the banning of OnlyFans model MorgPie following a viral topless stream. While she certainly appeared to be topless, her chest was not fully visible, leading to a debate over whether she had, in fact, broken the rules. And our discussion question here is, uh, should there be a greater tolerance for non-sexual nudity on Twitch? Why can't there be? That's an interesting topic of discussion, but there's something more important that I want to address, and that is, is that really where your nipples are? Uh, yeah. No, no I'm, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm, you, that, that's a perfectly good place for them. You're doing great. Good job. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Okay, what I wanted to, what I wanted to talk about is what was the actual motivation for this change? Did, is is it, your dad dying in the background? <laughs> these people pay my bills. <laughs> okay, sorry. What's up? What was the? Uh... Yeah, what I want to talk about is what was. <clears throat> let's speculate. Let's play the speculation yeah. game. What was the actual reason for this change? Because oh. on the surface, it looks like it was as simple as OnlyFans is making a ton of money mm -hmm. from people just throwing dollars at their screens um, and then taking a cut of it, and that seems like something that we'd love to participate in. I mean, I guess it's kind of a, a natural broadening of Twitch's of Twitch's content scope. I mean, you'd get... Which you'd they've get, sort of done before with, like, the Hot Tubs yeah, channels well, and stuff. I don't even just mean that. Categories. We can go back farther than that. <laughs> you'd get laughed out of the room these days for saying, what are you doing streaming on Twitch? You're not even gaming. Yeah. Like, that used to be a thing. That was absolutely thing. a thing. We used, to, we used to get flack in the chat on WAN show with people saying... Because it was a talk show. There's no game on screen. You shouldn't, even be, you shouldn't even be streaming on Twitch against terms of service. Like, people were actually angry about it. You couldn't do 3D printing. And nowadays, point. pretty much anything goes within categories like just chatting and IRL. And so it's not like they haven't dramatically broadened the type of content on the platform before... Maybe to them, did this just seem as simple as, I don't know, broadening the content again? As long as it's labeled clearly, what is the difference between this content being on Twitch TV versus this content being at an eight-second Google search, assuming you're on dial-up? Often for the same On some other name. site. Exactly. <clears throat> and so, with that in mind, do you think it was that simple? I think that might be part of it. I, I, I think also there's like, I think Twitch suffers because there are, I, th I think maybe their rules are like more defined. I haven't, I haven't really compared, but it feels like their rules are more defined than other platforms. Cause like, if you're going to try to say, uh, YouTube doesn't have this stuff, you're nuts. 
Oh, 100%. All over YouTube. I but have, no one looks at new YouTube and says like, oh, that's a website that has this stuff. That's not a, uh, a consistent conversation. I have not to the same degree as a platform like Twitter, but I have absolutely come across very lewd videos on YouTube oh, completely yeah. by accident. Oh, One yeah. was, I mean, and sometimes it's, it's not even in the ways that you would Twitter, think. Twitter, it's like... Oh, constant you click on anything trending and you scroll and you're just like oh well wow. there's a butt yeah even um, even if just some random tweet that isn't even yeah. on the trending section but if it just gets a little bit too much traction yeah there you go yeah you'll just you'll just get people promoting their only fans or and just just posting pornography for no reason other than just because i guess they want to yeah um but so so it's not nearly to that degree but you know sometimes on youtube it's not in the ways that you would expect like one of the times i saw what i thought was probably the the most lewd thing I've come across on the platform, I think ever. I'm just I'm just trying to think. Um, it was it was some kind of music video, okay. and so it was yeah, kind probably. of <laughs> it was kind of mainstream ish. Yeah. But definitely too racy for you to ever see it on something like MTV. Like it not mm -hmm. it, you know not only were there just breasts bouncing around, people dancing around, but like you know consuming shots off them. Yeah. So it's like to me that cr that crosses way over from nudity Is that into that song which a sex act. The name starts with wet. I actually have no idea. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, oh, uh, uh, the Nicki Minaj one. I, I don't know. Or is that I or Cardi so. B? Sorry, I, I don't remember. <sighs> Ooh, I don't know. I think all the young people <laughs> cried out. Yeah. And then were suddenly silenced just now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know who these people are. Um. <laughs> anyway, the point is no, no. I it was some random. It was like obscure. Okay. Yeah. Um, and like I, but yeah, that's like totally a thing. I've never YouTube. seen it before. I've never seen it again. I just was like, seriously, this yeah. is on YouTube. So like when that's happening on YouTube, yeah. it's all over Twitter. I don't use it, but I'm assuming it's all over TikTok. I have no idea. Um, and, uh, I also don't go to this website, but I'm assuming this is a thing on kick. Like why do they have to have specific rules that are more, <clears throat> more aggressive than other platforms? Um, I, I think they're also th so they're they're probably feeling like they have more pressure on them than other platforms to actually do something about it. I think that's because they talk about it more. I think YouTube and these other platforms just ignore it. Yeah, well, it's not just that the Twitch community talks about it a lot Absolutely. because whether Twitch and people try to push the lines more. I think whether Twitch, Twitch um, how much responsibility Twitch bears for this, I think, is open for debate, but. Twitch certainly is in the conversation around, you know, people streaming on the platform and cultivating an audience. Offboarding to OnlyFans or whatever Based else. on appearance. And even, well, even before OnlyFans existed, the conversation around streamers on Twitch. Oh, I see. Attracting people through. Because of their appearance instead of their like gameplay or whatever. Or it whatever. Was. Yeah. So I almost wonder if part of this conversation is just vestigial from when Twitch was. Mm supposed to be about gameplay and nothing else and what is what are people doing on here not focused on the gameplay the, and it's it's more about this and i think there's a relatively simple counter argument to that that i've heard sure. a bunch of times from a bunch of people which is like if someone is sitting here watching uh a, a certain piece of content because they want to look at someone that they think is attractive that person is probably not going to come watch your game stream yeah, no, like no, hundred it's, it's percent. It's a different audience member. Therefore, you're not losing anything from them looking at somebody else because they would have been looking at somebody else on some other platform, anyways. So, like, who cares? Um, I, I've heard that from quite a few different people. I think that holds a lot of water, personally. Like, I don't know. Like, they're not they're not coming here to watch you play League of Legends right now. They want to look at attractive person. Um, if they can't look at attractive person on Twitch, they'll go look at them somewhere else. Um, so I. Um I do also definitely see some of the arguments against, you know, if, if Twitch's position, let's say, is, you know, realistically, this is a, this is a quick Google search away. Uh, yeah. What difference does it make if it's a click or, you know, entering, what, what is it, nine, nine keystrokes? Um, but on the other hand, you know, I do kind of understand, too. It's like this is a site whose brand is... <laughs> Well, hold on. No, not that. I just I clicked on a category on Twitch and was immediately assaulted. I, I, I oh, okay. 
<laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> What's the category? Uh, just chatting. And there, right. there was no blurred thumbnails. <laughs> the least they could do is wear these, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, they might be. <laughs> That's true. They're below the frame. That's like, true. They're, they're actually not in frame. Okay. Uh, um, well, at any rate, so the... <laughs> You're really undermining the point I'm trying to make here right now, because I was going to say Twitch's brand on the face of it is more uh, minor friendly. It's gaming and video gaming. I th yeah. But I guess here's the question. I mean, is gaming that minor friendly inherently anymore? Like, I, 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 have, I haven't played The Witcher 3. I've only played the first half an hour. Bombs and within the, first, within the first half an hour, there's a lot of butts. <laughs> Um, but Ball Skate 3 is like a very horny game. <laughs> well, like, uh, it just is. I don't know. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I think Twitch had that reputation, and I think that maybe some of that still stays just from people that don't use the platform too much. But I think if you're like a Twitch person and you're on the platform all the time, you're aware that just chatting is like by far the biggest category and stuff like this happens all the time in that category. There's the like hot tubs category or whatever. They have a, they have a, all, all these other things. Like I, I just, I think they've, they've gone a little bit further than dipping their toe for yeah, a long so then time now. Here's the question then, <clears throat> given that that's, given that their brand for better, whether it should be or not has been this for a very it's, long time. Yeah, we're already here. I'm going to ask a question that you might not even want to answer. Okay. Should Twitch have just stuck to their guns and just said, yeah, this kind of soft core pornography is just part of the site now. If you don't like it, you don't have to look at it. Hmm. Um. Yes, we're that desperate because hmm. our, our lunch is getting eaten by See, companies that are just willing to allow this on their platform. And realistically, what difference does it make if we have an age verification check versus their age verification check? I mean, it's on there. Do you imagine your kids aren't finding this stuff? I think the thing that makes me want to defend them sticking to their guns is that the other platforms are doing it. It's just not getting talked about as much. Like we said, it's on YouTube. It does it's feel on like Twitter. a bit of a double standard, doesn't it's, it? It's everywhere else. It's just not on Twitch so much. Uh, sticking to their guns. Sorry, <clears throat> we've got some... Uh, apparently that's a colloquialism that is more local than I realized. It oh, means what? just... It means holding their ground. Yeah. Just staying the course and going, yeah, these are the new terms of service. We don't really care about the backlash. Realistically... This is how it is. This is how it is. Yeah, because yeah, tw Twitch feels like it, it gets way disproportionate amount of attention... Uh, on, on this in particular. And I don't necessarily know why. It might be because discoverability on Twitch is really hard for people. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an extremely competitive space. And it's an extremely competitive space with a large amount of people trying to get into it. Um, and it's hard to even niche out in Twitch because of how like the categories works and stuff like that. Um, so I, I, could, I could see it being more, to, more of a point of contention of like people being like, oh no, they're taking my viewers. But I think really the biggest takeaway of that is like if someone wants to watch that, despite these currently being on, they're not going to come watch WAN Show. We're not losing any viewers um, that are like, it, because th those people would just go to another website anyways. You know, like it's, it just doesn't... I, I, I don't know. Um, it's not like it's not like there's this pool of people that like it's their job to watch Twitch. This exact amount of people will watch Twitch, and you get to pull from that group of people. That's not how the internet works, right? So you're basically saying it's not a zero sum game. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Um, so is there an argument to be made that the game streamers could benefit <laughs> from overall increased traffic on the they site, could, and they should just not worry about it because if that person is no longer interested in watching that particular stream for some various particular reason they might now be more interested in watching gaming content and maybe they'll stick around and check yours out or the whole site because creators tend to be very algorithmically driven the whole site might just devolve into maybe whether it's you know cutting off your camera right here and just chatting or whether it's installing nudie mods on all the games you're playing it might just devolve into freaking everything just being butts and not yep. being able to avoid it and if this is a site you care about a community that you love 
that might be really I upsetting just, for you if you're just not that into that and you wish it would just go back to the way it is. I mean, that's a legitimate position. Totally. I just think we're kind of past that already, personally, mm. even without this change. Um, like I said, we've had hot tubs for a long time. Um, like it's, it's not just a gaming platform anymore. It just isn't. Just chatting is very legitimately by a lot the biggest category on the platform. Now you could say that gaming should be a category against something as broad as just chatting, but it isn't. So just chatting is always in the number one position on Twitch. Right. I don't know. Like there's no game right now, um, at least that I, as far as I can see in the category view that comes to half of just chatting. Things like Counter-Strike, which are like huge in the gaming space, right? Baldur's Gate 3 currently winning every award on the planet. Um, why is anyone watching the day before? Whatever. Um, well, I mean, they might just <laughs> want to watch the dumpster fire. <laughs> yeah. uh, Counter-Strike, 21.4K. Baldur's Gate 3, 8.9K. Just chatting, 433. Like, yeah, Fortnite gets 171. Yeah, but that's still what you said. It's, it's less than half. half. And I can't even click on this right now. Right. because So so you didn't even have to scroll? or All like I did was click on just chatting, and that was the top of just chatting. I didn't scroll. Right. So if you're... But then, but then remember, too, a lot of the people arguing against the terms of service change, it's not like they're not already upset about that, and they probably don't want that to exist, yeah. but... What people, I think, need to <coughs> remember is that Twitch is a company owned by Amazon, a giant mega corporation that is ultimately driven by one thing, and that's what's drive mo what drives money. And what drives money is eyeballs. And what drives eyeballs is... Apparently. I mean, I, I, I have no way of knowing for sure. I don't have their <laughs> analytics. It just seems like it. Makes sense. Um yeah, I don't know. I, I've heard some ideas, <clears throat> um, but I just I just don't think it's going to go that way. But I've heard some ideas of like, oh, this is a perfect example of a uh, opt-in scenario where like this is something you should have to manually toggle that you do want to see mm -hmm. instead of having it be by default. But then I mean, plenty of stuff's like that. You have to you have to manually enable allow explicit, you know, images or videos or whatever else it is. Uh, but again, back to the decisions being driven by, at the end of the day, advertising dollars, which are driven by views. I don't think that Amazon or Twitch are in any kind of position where they feel like they want know, just, people to have to click that. Yeah, just for yeah, exactly for the for the good of you know something because we care about the morality police or whatever. We're just gonna kiss goodbye some significant portion. Like you know from working on, you know, websites that the smallest amount of friction will send oh, a user yeah. somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I think that's a good counter argument for what I was saying earlier about the nine keystrokes versus one click, right? Yeah, that small amount of friction could actually be the difference between, you know, my homepage on my computer is Twitch TV and I want something to watch and I'm just going to click on something right on the homepage versus I'm going to navigate to some other site. Like people's decision-making processes really can be what now? You clicked it again. Well, okay. I bet you did. Okay. 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 He okay. did it okay. again. Okay. Okay. People in flow plane chat are telling me I did it wrong. Cause I need to sort by views or viewers, whatever. You're going to get us in trouble. No, I'm not scrolling down. I'm staying. Oh. I'm staying. Oh, up here. I see. Um, I see, but it didn't fix it. No. Because I won't scroll down for you, but this one is I mean, what was there last time. I have, no, I have no way of knowing what's below that purple bar. Yeah. I think you need to scroll. No. <laughs> <laughs> I will not. <laughs> to refuse, I'm going back here, and then I'll scroll here. There, done. Oh, hold on. Oh, uh, it doesn't. It, I okay. just scrolled on the main page. Winter Wizard is, has quoted you here, just checking. Yeah, Luke Lefrenier, 2023. Oh my goodness. Full just plane checking. Chat, full plane chat said I did it wrong. <laughs> I used the default option the first time, which is just clicking on the chat category, and that's what it showed. And then I clicked on views, high to low, and it was still there. So you guys are wrong. Get wrecked. Anyway, I I I don't know the right answer here. On the one no, hand, no, I'm not logged in. Get over it. Oh my goodness, people. <laughs> Got him. <'em. sighs> <laughs> oh my God. 
Uh, I don't know the right answer here. On the one hand, I do think Twitch has sort of been unfairly singled out here. There is yeah. a ton of this content available on basically <laughs> any video or image like media sharing site on the entire internet and you're not going to stop it. Um, but on the other hand, you know, should there be, should, should it matter, you know, what your brand is? And if your brand is supposed yeah. to be gaming, should you at least pretend to though? give a shit about, I think, I think even a lot of the just chatting streams are, I, I can't check. Supposed to be, you know, with gamers, with people who are culturally gamers, you know. I don't know if that's even true, though. I, a, lot of, a lot of really big streamers that I can think of. Okay, like who? Uh, what's the... <laughs> I don't remember his name. You, you built a computer for him. Oh. Um, like, does he game ever? I don't think so. I think so. Hassan, right? Yeah. Does he game ever? I think so. I have no idea. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't watch Twitch. <laughs> I, I didn't watch any of his videos before we did the collab, yeah. and I haven't really tuned any, into anything after, um, which may surprise some of you. Okay, he does stream in, Holy in crap, Luke. not just chatting. What? I All I did was go to the homepage, and I am immediately... <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's and <laughs> low cut tops. Let's go. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, but like, uh, yeah. They can maybe do stuff with their. Uh, yeah. See, I jumped to YouTube and that did not happen to me. Um, No, I think at some point he probably did play games or something, but I don't really... If you really... go to his channel, there's a, uh, a thing, Hasanabi's recently streamed categories. And yeah, just chatting's in number one, and then there's special events, which is also there. But then he's got like Lethal Company, which as far as I know is a newer game, so this must have been somewhat recently. Okay. Um, I don't know, though. Again, I don't, I don't do the watching of the streams. That's fair. I, I can't find anything that doesn't seem to be anything other than sort of... Yeah, neither can I, so I don't know. Yeah, predominantly <laughs> talk show. Yeah. So I, I, I think I think there genuinely is quite a few creators on the platform that are just talk show. There's also creators on the platform that just watch YouTube videos and do other things like that um, that aren't gaming, right? So Yeah. I don't know. I don't and know. it's been that way for a long time. And you know what else has been that way for a long time? Us talking about this topic. Let's move on to something new. Yeah. You want to pick one? Sure, sure. Are we keeping on the things? I mean, you don't have to. I was going to leave mine on. Speaking of keeping these on, you can't check who's monetized on YouTube anymore. YouTube has removed a small piece of public code that indicates whether or not a channel is currently monetized. The code doesn't reveal how much uh, the channel is getting, just the fact that they are a part of the YouTube partnership program. This code has traditionally been used by creators, marketers, and journalists to confirm which channels are receiving money and by, and by people of various motivations looking to petition YouTube to demonetize a particular channel. Okay, I got you. Um, this change has also broken several internet tools such as is this channel monetized, which when asked if Linus Tech Tips is monetized simply responds that the user is sending too many requests. What? Uh, also known as it is not working. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I thought I thought we meant that it was like specific to our channel that it. It's, no, it's, I, I think what they mean is that they tried it on our channel, and that's the God. error code that it's currently spitting out because it is broken. Um, discussion question: Should details about who and who isn't monetized be more or less readily available? I don't know. I can think of um, uh, almost immediately. I can think of why YouTube would have wanted to do this. Um, which I, th I think is one point that we didn't necessarily bring up much about Twitch, which is I think part of their motivation is just hoping that they can spend less time uh, moderating and hoping that they can spend less time dealing with like the fact that uh, one of the bigger Twitter accounts I know about is literally just, is this person banned on Twitch or not? Um, like that's a huge thing. So yeah, I think and they anytime, want to get away from that. Anytime that conversation comes up they have it's to talk negative. about it again and again yeah yes. chat was bringing up too that you know part of the reason part of the motivation for them to change the rules might have been to just 
avoid this constant cycle where someone does something to push the boundaries because that's what people do and then twitch would respond often in an inconsistent manner yes and then it Absolutely. would spark this huge conversation where no matter what they do even if what they do is favoritism blah, yeah, blah, blah. even if what they did was 100 percent in line with their community guidelines the conversation would still be about how horrible Twitch is because the rules weren't being applied evenly because of the other times that they didn't do it right. So they were basically in this in this catch-22 where if they don't do the right thing, then they're criticized for doing the right thing before. And if they do the right thing, they're criticized for, well, why didn't they do it before? And so if they just basically said, okay, well then, f*** it, everything's allowed... Th that Good. seemed like a way out, and then the internet exploded. And mo and moderation does not scale well. Um, so when you're a huge platform, moderation is like a big issue. But anyways, coming back to YouTube, uh, I think part of the reason for this is because yeah, they don't want that type of stuff. So when if they have a channel that's currently under fire, uh, and they decide to keep it monetized or not, yeah. now they don't have to deal with the flack. If they just take the flack for doing this once by shutting it down. And there's probably, I, I'm, I'm sure internally they were like, oh, this is going to get a bunch of bad press. But they're like, yeah, it's going to get a bunch of bad press once. And then now we don't have to deal with this problem anymore. I wouldn't like, be yeah. surprised if this is the first move. Maybe not even the first move because say, we could go farther back. Like we could go, we could go back to, yeah, the, the, just the reduction in transparency, whether it's removing access to dislikes, uh, whether it's running ads on non-monetized yeah, channels. Yeah, that was a while ago, but yeah. That was a long time ago. Yeah. So that's the only reason this is a conversation at all, because it used to be that you could check if a channel was monetized by just watching videos on it yeah. and seeing if any ads played. But nowadays, it's impossible to tell because YouTube will just run ads against a channel regardless of whether they're actually paying out any revenue sharing. One of the things I asked them back then was, hey guys, this is Austin. No, sorry. One of the things I asked them back then was, hey, <laughs> if you guys are taking 100% of the revenue share on any video that is not YouTube Partner Program, don't you have a bit of a conflict of interest here? Don't you have an incentive to not allow people to in. promote videos that give you a 100% oh, revenue yeah, share versus a 60% revenue share or whatever the number is? Don't, I, I forget the number. because There was I a theory forget. back in the day that if you wanted to grow faster, you'd turn off ads. YouTube has <clears throat> always denied... Uh, uh, no, I, I, just a theory. Yeah, they're they take forty five. <clears throat> they take forty five. So, um, so yeah. So they would be taking one hundred percent versus the forty five percent that they take um, when there's a, when the ad plays on a YouTube partner channel. Um, they have denied every time anyone has brought it up that algorithmically there is any effect uh, from the monetization of a video. And I will say that. Personally, anecdotally, I have never seen evidence of an effect. Uh, I have seen non-monetized videos do extremely well. I have seen monetized videos do extremely poorly. And there are various reasons why we may or may not have had monetization enabled on a video in the past. Sometimes it was a requirement from a sponsor that if we had a, an in-video integration, they wanted their message to be the first thing people saw, not some random YouTube ad. So uh, we would often have agreements where for the first six months we would have monetization on the platform disabled. Mm. Um, there are situations where um, you know, the community doesn't feel like monetization is appropriate for a video, like with the uh, recent controversy, for example. So we've got mm -hmm. monetization off that. That didn't stop that video from getting 5 million views or something like that. Yeah. So if there is a legitimate interest from the audience, no, I, I just haven't actually seen evidence to support that. But just because they haven't done it yet or haven't done it to me, doesn't mean that they won't do it ever or haven't done it to anyone. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that I would have any way of being able to tell. Like if YouTube suddenly, you know, turned up the heat on their ad sales and sold 20% more inventory against the same number of views on the platform and they were just like, hmm, why don't we just put all of this on random videos about dishwasher repair and take 100% instead of 45% and no one will be any the wiser. Woohoo. 
have no way of knowing that. Nobody would have any way of knowing that. Yeah. And in fact, what I suspect, although I don't have any way of knowing this for sure, but what I suspect is that a lot of these decisions about which videos are monetized or which ones are being served an ad and when, um, I suspect a lot of these decisions are actually driven by AI and driven algorithmically. So it would be nearly impossible for even an internal whistleblower to say, yeah, the executives got together and like made a call that we're going to put all of our you know new ad inventory on these because at the end of the day, most of these engines are just input, yeah. experiment, try to achieve goals. So if the input is uh, you know optimize uh, revenue for the platform, well, part of optimizing revenue is going to be putting ads on videos that are very engaging for viewers so that you have a longer watch session so they'll watch more videos and watch more ads but part of that strategy could also be recognizing hey this is probably a one and done i should probably cram as many ads down this person's throat while they try and troubleshoot an old crt tv and they absolutely need this information and take 100 percent of that money yeah and the actual teams who create these algorithms wouldn't necessarily know exactly what it's doing minute to minute. They could go back and kind of go, okay, so here's a thing that appears to be happening, but nobody <clears throat> made that decision. So there's nobody is culpable for it. And so again, I'm not saying this is happening. I'm just saying it's not implausible. Yeah. If that makes sense. Um, I wonder if this is just the next move towards what will be the next next move, which is not being able to check if a video is monetized. Tell me this, what benefit is there to YouTube for you to know if the creator monetized that video? So, would this, are you saying this would also obfuscate to the creator or just to users? Just to users. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Because back to, the, back to the Twitch conversation, it would keep YouTube out of the news. Yeah. It's like, yeah, just ads are just normal and you click on videos and there are ads and it is absolutely none of your <clears throat> business from YouTube's perspective, whether that channel is part of the partner program, whether that video is you know, monetized by the creator or not monetized by the creator. Because, you know, imagine this, you know, imagine a controversial creator, um, you know, like especially, you know, you look at the way that politics are, are, are super polarized in the, in the States right now, right? So let's say no matter what side it is, someone is going to be super angry about some political commentator being on the platform. For sure. And having Guaranteed. the video monetized. <laughs> And going to call for some kind of boycott of the yep. platform for, yep. for supporting them, for sharing money with them. And so if YouTube just kind of went, yeah, how about you just not know? Yep. You not know who's getting money. You not know which videos they've enabled monetization on. I think that you'll still see creators, you know, as a gesture, talk about, hey, I'm, I'm turning monetization off on this video or, um, you know, uh, one, one that you see probably more often than that is... Which um, we could lie about now. I, I'm going to donate or the at proceeds. at that point, not now. But at that point, there'd be no follow-up, no accountability. Um, and I don't think that from YouTube's perspective... That's a problem. Yeah. Why do they care? And it, it sucks because this is, I, I, I love pulling it all the way back to this every time, but this is the Blizzard developers on stage problem where more transparency, more access to different parts of companies and stuff just gets them put on pikes constantly. Um, which sucks because it's a thing everybody wants, um, but it ends up getting shut down due to community responses to things because it's easier to blow up about the stuff that you can see and that is in your face all the time yep. than dig for things. And I think a lot of companies and maybe people are just tired yeah. of there being some kind of controversy um, and just looking for, looking for sources of controversy and just kind of going, oh, okay, that's a source of... Okay, let's just make it so that doesn't happen again. Oh, yeah. Let's make it so that one doesn't happen again. Yeah. And if you just slowly and, pick these away. And there's honestly very little benefit for a platform to, for a platform itself, 
Think, think of the amount of times that a platform itself was in the news and it was a good thing. Usually, what the platforms want is they want the creators on the platform to be popping off all over the place. Because then that pulls people into the platform yes. anyways. And then if you're spending more time on the platform, then while you're on the platform, the platform can kind of try to monetize you. YouTube Premium, Twitch Turbo, whatever it is. But... You want the creator to be pulling people in. You don't really want your name plastered all over the place all the time because it's almost guaranteed going to be negative information. Well, that's the thing. Like negative negativity sells. Um, I could I could probably count on my hands and feet the number of times that we have made the news for anything positive in the entire time this company has existed, and I would need more than those digits to count the number of articles and mentions and videos just in the last few months alone. Yeah. Right? Like it, it it's it's no secret that people people want to see a scandal. They want to see yep. a downfall. They don't want to see slow consistent growth. They don't want to see, you know, a a, a more complex story uh, about, you know, growing pains and and trying your best and sometimes screwing up and like it's it's nuanced and that's a lot of work it's a lot of mental load uh, i think that something is bad is more entertaining it's easier it's 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 popcorn it goes down easy you know deprecated said they want strawberry but honestly you can you can deconstruct that relatively simple sentence a little bit and like yeah the hack brought in a c incredible amount of attention. Yeah. Incredible amount. Yep. I, we had more eyes on us than like ever, basically. Well. Not quite. There was another one after that. Um, but. <laughs> ever so far. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, yeah, it, it was, um, that was a big deal. And it wasn't obviously just the strawberry, but like, that's part of, part of the story that brought tons of people in and like all of our properties exploded in a good way at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Dave, there was more eyes on the channel. There's more eyes on Flowplane. There's more eyes on LTT store. There's more eyes on everything. Dave Gurr says, no one reads a news story that has the headline, 100 children had a good day today and nothing bad happened. You know, I was watching, um, I was watching the karate kid with my son and his friend um because they were checking out the new tv and they had a sleepover and they were watching the movie and Which i was like one? uh first one nice um and and i was like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be that like weird parent that comes and hangs out with you know let them let them do their thing but they were very settled into their movie they were not like talking about anything and i sat in the back row and just kind of was like yeah you know what i'm gonna watch the karate kid i guess it's been i was probably his age yeah. The last time I watched it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's a scene where um, where the sensei uh, lends the kid, I forget anyone's names in the movie or whatever, but the sensei lends the kid his car. And it's like, you know, his collection of cars is like, his. these are prized possessions. Like, the kid's like mind blown that when it's time for the dance or prom or whatever it is, that he's allowed to borrow this car. And they go out of their way, right? Like, remember, American car culture was still a thing kind of in the 80s. Like, it was sort of coming towards a, a time of big change. Um, but it was still very much a thing in the oh, 80s. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so even without necessarily, you know, product placements and making sure that the emblems are in every flipping shot or whatever, there was clearly a lot of thought and work that went into making this car look like a million bucks. Like it was beautiful and the way it shines when he drives it. And, and, and he, he rolls out in the car to go pick up the girl, you know, and, um, then they go on their date and he kind of passes off the car as his own because he's like trying to show off a little bit and asks her if she wants to drive it and she gets behind the wheel and I think she's only just gotten her license and he got his license like that day or something like that and they... they pull out of the parking lot from the dance and she's like asking how fast does it go and he responds I don't want to find out and it fades to black and then the next scene comes <laughs> And I was sitting there going, they don't do that anymore. No. 
something never something scandal is crashing man that scandal dad's pissed is is too spicy and it's someone's it's, going to the hospital it's too easy to create a, a tension to create a, an angry scene to create heightened emotions between our characters by having this prized possession damaged I can't remember the last time I saw an interaction between characters in a piece of media where someone lends someone else something that is one of their most prized possessions and the other one respectfully cares for it and returns it in pristine condition after enjoying it and is thankful. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not trying to say the 80s was better or whatever because... I, realistically, I wasn't even there. I wasn't born yet, <laughs> right? And it's clear that there were lots of problems. You yeah, know, it's yeah, not like yeah. we don't have pretty in-depth historical records. Yeah, I'm just saying that from a media standpoint, a little bit less. We're very dialed extremes. into anger and controversy and upset and and disrespect. Um, and you didn't you didn't need that. You didn't need that in this movie. One of the biggest improvements I've done for myself over the last little while is to try to disconnect from that stuff significantly more. And it's like, it actually made like a very noticeable impact. Life's like a little bit more chill when you're just like, actually, no. <laughs> I'm not going to consume this media or information or news feed or whatever. It's just like, nah, I'll chill. I'm trying to do more of those like, you know, the classic like, uh, you have to wait in this area, so you just start like reading the signs or whatever. I try to do that a little bit more. Oh, just like no, like what I would have done, however long ago, is go to my Google News feed and just start scrolling through stuff or whatever. And I'll still do it sometimes, but I try to like consciously be like, no, I just, I can, I can stay out for now. Um, my Google News feed is. Um because and the, the way that I described it in a conversation I had recently was there's a, a multi-billion dollar industry that is based around just dominating your mind and getting you to do this thing that is good for various companies the corporations man but yeah to a certain degree but like actually though yeah so you should consider that and not just play into it 100% of the time um and, you know, maybe you want to play into it sometimes because it tickles your little gooey brain. Um, but I think sometimes you should fight against it a little bit. Mine's not too bad. I definitely get too much American politics. Yeah. Um, something, something, Oval Office recordings, uh, Unify RGB lighting, uh, something, something impeachment, Intel unveils AI chip to compete with NVIDIA, 8-channel memory on WRX whatever is faster, uh, Seagate has a hard drive that's not supposed to exist. Linux patch drops support for 17-year-old Intel thing. Uh, auto spill credential leak and Android password managers. Tesla Cybertruck crumple zones. PC memory is about to double in capacity. Sales of BC homes. You can really tell what I what I pay attention to. And I've talked to you about this before, but like, I think that with a little bit of discipline, we can create you can like a Google News in. feed. Yeah. Like I have had to, I think it takes a lot of discipline personally. But, I have yeah. had to try because every once in a while they'll try and get me back into it. Yeah, and I have tried very hard to not click on anything Star Wars mm -hmm. because it usually just annoys me and is just like some stupid nonsense AI written article or whatever. So it usually just sucks anyway, um, and it gives me it gives me no satisfaction. It doesn't help me at work. It doesn't help me in my personal life. Whereas most of my stuff is pretty tech these days. Chips Act, uh, Steam Trolls Cheaters, Ryzen 8000G, NVIDIA CEO at, at an all-hands meeting, Intel launches Core Ultra, 3D printer, pneumatic, pneumatic actuator. Like, I... It's hard. I think I broke mine. Uh, at one point in time, I decided that the way I wanted to train it was to just tell it all the times that I didn't like something or didn't want to see something. Oh, I never do yeah, that. Yeah, that was bad. You yeah. should not do that, by the way. No, because it doesn't know what you don't like about it. Yeah. And, and I think also it will see that you don't like all of these things and just start guessing really sporadically mm -hmm. so like at one point i showed i showed emma this i think i've talked to you but at one point in time it decided that i was interested in some country singer i had never heard of <laughs> i never clicked on any of them and for at least a week it was every second article was just like this is the shirt they wore like just anything it could possibly think of 
of this like one person I had never heard of before. It's amazing how quickly what? he led astray. I clicked on one stupid thing about Meghan Markle at one point. <laughs> okay. And all of a sudden, like half my feed was just like, it's like whoa, you're really into this. Kate huh? Middleton and Harry Styles or whatever the other Harry is. No, sorry, he's a singer. It doesn't matter. The point is, uh, yeah, it was just full of that. And then another really funny one was I um, I was looking for a behind the scenes of something and I searched for it and I was like, oh, BTS has a totally different meaning now because of the, the, the Korean mega, oh, yeah, mega yeah, band, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, group, are they a band? Do they play instruments? I don't know. It doesn't matter. The point is Jimin's the best, no I guess, idea. or something. <laughs> uh, oh, oh. <laughs> what, what's the, you're, 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 you're a Jimin fan? Cool. Um, <laughs> The, po uh, the, the point is, I, I clicked one because I was like curious. I was like, sure. oh, yeah, okay. Oh, no. And then, oh, man. Oh, no. oh man. Like, like every, time one of the, every time one of them farted, there was a Google News alert for it. I was like, what even is this? Ugh. They changed their shirt. Like, this is their favorite color. Like, I don't fucking care. <laughs> yeah. I was idly curious. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Anyway, he was trying to get me. He really emphasized the if one of them farted, then so I was drinking water. <laughs> I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you like, like Shania Twain. I like, I like felt it coming and was like, no, he's gonna say something. I gotta break. I should have gotten with queefed or something. I would have gotten you with that. <laughs> Probably. He's oh. dead. Oh boy. Um. And it, what, uh, uh, what are we supposed to be talking we, we about? Were, right we were talking about. No, yeah, we we were technically on the topic of you can't check who's monetized on YouTube anymore, and we somehow got here. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah. That relates sure, to BTS. Yeah. Why don't we explain <laughs> what merge messages are and yeah. talk about some stuff going on on the store? Uh, merge messages are the way to interact with the show. Uh, don't send a Twitch bit or you know. Uh, youtube super chat or anything like that you want a merch message because we will either have our producer dan reply to you forward it to someone who can help you or put your message down here or forward it to us those are the four different things that can happen and if it gets forwarded to us we will address your comment on the show and if none of those things happen maybe there's a glitch in the matrix or whatever else hey at least you'll get some high quality merchandise in the mail. Yeah. Uh, we do have a couple of things to talk about. Uh, we've added a multi pack combo discount for stick locks. If you buy two packs, you can get them for $24.99. And if you buy four packs, you can get them for $39.99 if you want to equip a whole whack ton of your controllers. Also, we have an update for you guys on the backpack dual layer warranty issue. Um, our team is working through the final details and we'll have something out to all buyers early next week. Keep an eye out for that if you've purchased a backpack before December 9th. We appreciate your patience. This is a big task and we want to ensure it's done right. Uh, something that this update doesn't include, but I feel very strongly needs to be done, so I'm just going to say it now so that it's in the public record, is even if you buy one after December 9th, if you have a single layer regular backpack, uh, this doesn't apply to the Lux. The, the the apple leather is so thick we a never planned to put a single layer and b probably couldn't if we tried like the sewing would be impossible um but anyway if you bought one after december 9th that has a single layer um i don't think there's eligibility for the 25 dollar credit because now the messaging has been corrected on the site and there's no miscommunication about it but um the virtual second layer warranty where if it wears through um you know because of anything other than you know obvious intentional damage uh, at our discretion, you're you know, on a live what show. Is. You decide to cut it open. Yeah. Um, so we will 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 take care of you. There's there's a virtual second layer, um, and and we're we're gonna make sure we get that updated to everyone. So if you buy a backpack today, um, and the bottom wears through, you know, with natural wear and tear as part of our limited lifetime warranty. Um, we will we will make sure there's a carve out for that. Uh, we have a new newsletter. Oh, yeah. precision screwdriver leak and update. Yeah, they be interesting. Intuitive. Also, sort there's of. a newsletter update. We're going to delay publishing of our newsletters to the blog by about a week from the time they're sent out to the email list. So if you want the latest from LTT Store, make sure you sign up for our newsletter at the footer on the site. So that's uh, if you just kind of scroll down, right there. It's really hard to find. 
put your email there. The text is almost so big that I, I legitimately do kind of find it hard to find. You're, the part of your brain that ignores ads is like, huh? Yeah. It might be. There's a lot of really good stuff in here, including a ton of really interesting looks at the evolution of this product as it's been developed. Um, talking about materials, why we bothered to make one. This is so cool. Uh, all the different variations of ceramic and ceramic steel hybrid bearings. We found one that spins. Yeah, that's right. We measured this one, and your mileage may vary, but we found one that we were able to get to spin by hand for 70 seconds. Oh, my God. Just by giving it a little spin like that. Pretty wild. Uh, our end caps are going to be interchangeable, so you can swap them out with a 10 millimeter wrench. Uh, we're going to have different sizes and shapes. Check this out. Yeah, buddy. So if you want, um, you know, you like it to, you like to kind of palm it, or you know, you like the the flat top. Um, we're gonna have bit storage in the handle, which is pretty cool. Here's a lot of different <laughs> variations of that. Anyway, you're gonna definitely want to read through that. A lot of really cool details from the team. And oh, oh, so when can I get one? We're still a few months away. Apparently, I'm reading this update alongside you guys, uh, planning to offer a unique launch experience for this product. Once we offer a public notification sign-up page for launch, there may be an opportunity to purchase a limited number of pre-launch drivers. Oh, yeah, we have talked about this. So like with the screwdriver, we want to back order this one to get an idea of what demand is going to be like and to help with cash flow. So we're not going to, we're not going to, do pre-orders because this is technically like a new product. I think we did pre-orders on the Lux because it's a material change. Um, I think we've done pre-orders on some of the screwdriver colorways and stuff like that. Uh, this is a very new product, so we're not going to expect people to order it sight unseen. Doing a pop-up or something? And I think we're it's either online or in person. We're not sure, but we're basically going to sell some of them, give people an opportunity to share their thoughts after having real customer hands-on with it. And then at that point, we're going to open up back orders, which are, I mean, essentially, you know, a, a pre-order in the sense that the production is not done yet, but you know, it will be, we'll have, we'll have done some mass production and demonstrated what the product will be. Uh, we're hoping that, um, we will have details for that in early 2024. I do wonder if at some point, um, people have made it very clear. They're like, yeah, you know, you shouldn't do pre-orders, but also, I'd love to be able to pre-order one. I'd be the first one to send my money because I just want to have it right away. <laughs> I don't know. At some point, maybe we just maybe we just drop the whole thing and are just like, yeah, we're doing pre-orders for it. Don't don't pre-order it, but you can. Yeah, I I don't know, man. People want it. It kind of feels like one of those things where, uh, like you know, everyone's mad about microtransactions in games, but they want it. The market shows. I don't know. Like I can, I can and like, is there, is there really, is the, is there like, what's the point of not letting them, I guess? Well, I think the point is that there's, okay. Like let, telling let, them like, we don't even think you should. I love analogies. Okay. Right. So let's take, uh, let's take uh, one of, one of, you know, society's favorite bad guys, right? Uh, big tobacco. So I'm a tobacco company. I release an ad because for some reason I'm allowed to run TV ads again or something. Sure. So I run, I run an ad on TV um, that, is, that basically says you shouldn't smoke. It is really harmful and causes health effects that are very mm, but then you sell deleterious cigarettes. to you. Yeah. That's dramatically a disaster. The point is I basically say smoking's bad, don't buy cigarettes. But then I'm still selling them which in a way is extra bad because I extra super know that they're definitely yeah, bad. Yeah, I have a counter for this. Sure. I think the pre-ordering of a product is, le is contentious, the right word, is less contentious than smoking. Uh, and like an example that I would give is I tell everyone not to pre-order games. Yeah. I, I have definitely pre-ordered games. Me too. I have pre-ordered games since I told people not to pre-order games. Yep. Me too. I, I pre-ordered Bill Watterson's quote unquote graphic <laughs> novel and yeah. it was. Wish you waited for the reviews on that one. No, because you would have bought it anyways. I would have, I would have just given him the 20 bucks. Yeah. I would have rather just him not bothered to produce this, this is like, like waste. Starfield was a trash heap. 
I was going to buy it no matter what. Yeah. It didn't matter if every reviewer on the internet was like, this is trash. Bethesda was my favorite game company for years when I was a kid. I'm going to buy this freaking game. I feel like people struggle with analogies sometimes. Mm -hmm. Did someone point that yeah, out? This is Twitch chat. No, no, no. So the LTT screwdriver is as addictive as tobacco? <laughs> no, that's not the point. The point is not the specifics of, you oh. know, how harmful the thing is or whatever else. The point is just the the, the potential for perceived hypocrisy. That's it is a fidget the toy, point. though. So. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> this is a joke. <laughs> oh, man. Um but yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't feel like pre-ordering is as is. I don't know. I feel like we can say, like in general, uh, you you know probably shouldn't do pre-orders. But like, I don't think it's as bad as people smoking. Um, I don't think it's as bad for you as people smoking. Um, I think it's a really dangerous, slippery slope of morality and ethics. I mean, I think that I could easily rationalize to myself that there's nothing wrong with us taking pre-orders on this product because A, it's going to be great, and B, if it's not, we got you. Trust me, bro. Yeah, exactly. But I think that that's a, a dangerous path to hubris, right? I'm not going to make a mistake, and if I do, I'll fix it. And so what's the problem? Well, the problem is if any of that fails, mm -hmm, <laughs> if, mm -hmm. if, because there's, what are the, what are the safety checks? Um, and I, nah, I'm not going to go there. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. I think we'll, we'll give it some more thought. I mean, with this, long, the, look, my point is it's a ton of work for us to red hot it's rush hyper expensive. a small batch um, do a pre-sale event or like an, er an early sale, like an early access event for a physical product. Um, those units are super expensive. The marketing and the event management of all of this is super expensive, super time consuming. And oh. at the end of the day, it changes nothing about what the final product is. It telegraphs confidence. So you could see it as kind of like a, an effective marketing tool in that way. Mm. But then looking back at the screwdriver launch, I don't think people took it seriously until Project Farm ultimately came out and gave it the stamp of approval yeah. anyway. Yeah. So then what did it matter what our confidence was or what the reactions of the live buyers at the show were? If at the end of the, if at the, end of the day, um, people were just going to... Is that the solution? Do you see? Do you seed it to? Uh, you can't do that with all products, though. No, and that and Todd doesn't want us to seed him products. He buys everything, right? Like he'll 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 pay his money early, so he'll accept that benefit in the form of, in a way, special treatment. But at the end of the day, from his perspective, and I agree with him, from his perspective, he's just a customer who paid his sixty nine dollars and ninety nine cents, nice, and got a screwdriver. Um, and so, yeah, there are definitely monetary benefits to him getting early access to it in that he can go live with his video earlier than other people who didn't get early access. But I think we have enough of his track record to go, guys, that's probably not it. That's, yeah. that's probably not the issue. I think that he genuinely is a sincere guy and wants to get information to the audience in a timely manner so that they can make an informed purchase decision. I don't think this is about him just getting more views. Yeah. I think he could have released his video a month after the release of the product. And it still would have crushed. And it still would have gotten millions of views. Yep. So we might as well just have it out there earlier. And realistically, if another media outlet came to us and was like, hey, we're really big in the you know tool space or whatever, can we get... We, I don't see why we wouldn't give them the same treatment if they had the same kind of reach as Todd, though I don't know who does, but even if they had even less than Todd, I think that I, I don't think that that's some kind of weird advantage. And I don't think that there's inherently corruption there. I think if you have good people who are honest and working in good faith, there's nothing wrong with getting early access to a product and paying for it early. And I think it's kind of silly to, to think that it is, it was, it was amazing 
how many people went from, and I noticed usernames that were the same. Oh, yeah. How many people went from, that video was crazy. this thing is shit until Todd from Project Farm says it's good because he has impeccable integrity and who immediately flipped. They, they, they couldn't, their brains couldn't process that it could actually just be a good product. And so they went straight to Todd's corrupt, Todd's a shill. How much did LTT pay him? Oh, man. <laughs> Oh man! It, it, Where is your goalpost? Yeah, exactly. Keep moving it, man. Just keep, just keep walking. Keep walking till you reach the nearest ocean. Put the post at the bottom of it. Let me know how it goes. Channel that. Channel that prehistoric human hunting energy. Yeah. And just go. Anyway, uh, what are we supposed to be talking about? Yeah, we're supposed to do a couple of merch messages. All you got to do is head to ltdstore.com. Did we do any of them? Pick up? No, no, not even a little. Pick up some <laughs> stick locks or pick up. The, screwdriver you know whatever the case may be you've got the noctua screwdrivers on there now those are doing really well people are super stoked on them yeah um and then in the cart yeah. in the cart uh there'll be a box you can enter your merch message and it'll go here all right dan do you want to hit us with a couple merch messages yeah sure first one here hello wan show linus hello. with the go xlr support gone what xlr would you replace yours with or recommend I'm just going to keep using it until it, they pry it from my cold, dead hands. I really like it. It eventually, just works. Eventually, it'll die. And it hasn't yet. Yeah. Mind you, with the way that Microsoft changes Windows so relatively little from iteration to iteration these days, it is possible that my drivers for the Go XLR will work for a very, very long time. Like until we get another, you know, fundamental retooling of how audio is handled in Windows, like we did from XP to Vista. I think it is quite possible that with the usual hackery, right, where you, you force the install or you you go into whatever the file is and you like add your version of Windows to the supported OSs so that it bypasses oh. the compatibility check or whatever else. Um, I, I suspect it'll work for a long time. I didn't know this. Wildebeest and Full Plane Chat. So there's a community Go XLR software version. Nice. That's pretty crazy. I I'm a little my the first Go XLR I got bricked itself within a week. Um, so I don't know how confident I am in the thing living, but my sample size is very small. Yeah, and I've got at least one backup one kicking around somewhere, so <laughs> I'm good. There you go. I'm, right. I'm, I'm one of those people where if I find something I like, I make sure that... I've started converting to that. It, it's a good I, way to go. I just... I think part of it is just getting older. Maybe. I just... I um, For me, I spend... I, I will put way too much time and energy and, and whatnot into researching the purchasing decision, that like, if I'm very confident in this thing, like I spend a lot of time doing that, I get it, I keep it for a certain amount of time and I'm like, yeah, this is like amazing. I'm like, however many months into this and I still love this thing, yeah, okay. Well, let's just go get more because I don't want to do that again. <laughs> like, and if it's like a tool or something like this Go XLR thing, like whatever, this, this thing that it does hasn't really evolved all that much. And we might get more kilohertz. Maybe. Or more bits but whatever. or whatever. But at the end of the day, do I care about that? It's going to get crushed by whatever it thing might you have, stream it, it might through have anyways. more vibrant RGB. Discord's going to take it and just go... <laughs> well, I mean, garbage in, garbage out. You put in something better, Discord's crushing it, will be yeah. less worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, 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 but even so, like if, I, if there's something that I really like, honestly, guys, I just I don't feel that strongly incentivized to change it. And I think part of that is just how incremental the changes have gotten. So you'll have a new phone that comes out and it's like marginally faster and uh i don't know it has some like I'm just, I'm just trying to think of it has like another camera on it or whatever but they removed your headphone jack and you're just like well fuck, right that sucks and so many things are like that these days where if i'm happy with my go xlr and some new one comes out that has some just bullshit that I don't care about, but I give up something about it that I liked. And that thing I, about it that I like could be as meaningless as that I've already set up the profile and already adjusted my gain for where I like to put my microphone. Like that eight minutes of going through a setup wizard could be, could be the difference it's for annoying, me yeah. compared to the <laughs> meaningless things that they've improved that don't matter to me. Uh, Have you know. used the uh, roadcasters? No. Because that's that I believe these started being a thing fairly recently, or at least I only discovered them fairly recently. I think they're relatively similar priced. Um, like there's one on excellentphoto.ca right now. That's uh, for 450 CAD. 
Yeah, these you got are Canadian remember, dollars, guys, by go, the way. So it's a, like plus 30 plus percent. Go XLRs are crazy expensive too. Yeah, that's true. Like they, they were. Um, so if you want your uh, hyper expensive XLR interface with RGB on it option, um, there is still things like that, at least from Rode. I've, I know nothing about them. I've never used them, but I've heard of them. I've heard good things. I don't know, though. All I care about is my bleep button. Yeah. I don't see one. <laughs> I, I, I see configurable buttons. So. Yeah, I'm sure you could do it. Yeah, and I could I could probably figure this out. Um, but you have no reason to, necessarily. But I just... I. Man, I don't feel like it. It's not something that excites me. I would rather spend my energy on something that excites me, like the 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 the, the energy that I feel Whoa. when I'm playing around with cool tech that I care about is just so much greater. Hold okay, on a what second. are you looking at? Does just no one buy? I've never actually heard of this website before, so this isn't a recommendation. But um, it's four forty nine discounted from five forty nine. Mm-hmm. And if you buy it with these $260 headphones, you get the headphones for free? I don't know. Does no one buy this thing and they're just trying to like burn it down or what? It's probably more to do with the fact that there is excellent margin in these products and yeah. um, it's the holiday season. So you're going to see a lot of aggressive promos right now. Like we ran lots of stuff in our Black Friday, Cyber Monday promos that sells. Yeah, like it's it's not like we were That's desperate to enough. get rid of it. We did sell some stuff that we were desperate to get rid of. Hey, go full transparency. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but we absolutely promote stuff that was moving great. There's nothing wrong with that though, necessarily. Um, it might be a great product. You just order too many of it or whatever. Yeah, or or we didn't. We just or put that. on a promo because we were like, this is exciting. Yeah. Um, and so you can you can see stuff like that, especially this time of year. And I wouldn't necessarily read too much into it. Is all I'm trying to say. Apparently, Jay's two cents uses oh. Never mind. They said they believe Jace Two Cents uses a roadcaster for RTFM. Not certain though. Sure, yeah, it is with the merge message. Hi, DLL. Question for Linus. Did you learn ASL at some point? I noticed some signs, get it, that you've uh, learned some, like, uh, sorry, these keep shifting around, uh, like using ASL's six or using spatial mapping when talking on the show. Uh, yeah, my uh, my mom was a teacher of the deaf, and um, she is hard of hearing, and we were strongly encouraged to learn ASL. Uh, we had a foster kid in our house for a number of years who was, um, as far as I'm aware, profoundly deaf, like couldn't uh, couldn't hear anything. And so in order to communicate with him, uh, we were all encouraged to sign as much as possible. Uh, at one point, I was conversant enough that um, I managed to make my way through translation duties for my mom at a conference. It just about killed my brain. Uh, massive respect for interpreters. They, wow. Because um, sometimes you have to kind of make stuff up on the fly, right? Have you ever noticed um, well, yeah, I mean, if a word doesn't exist yeah. in that sense, so you're not making stuff up, but you're making up a way of expressing it or, yeah. or especially when you're, you know, okay, let's say you're, let's say you're interpreting for a government official and all of a sudden they start talking about defense or something like that. And you, I, you, I'm, I'm sorry, the, 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 what spanker missile or what, like, you, uh, it, yeah, it can be extremely challenging. I didn't even think about that. That's got to be nuts. Yeah, like lingo, <laughs> like interpreting at it, like a scientific conference. Holy crap, right? But accessibility matters. So have you ever noticed that interpreters will tag out really frequently? Was it a high mental strain? It's extremely draining. That makes sense. I don't know if I have ever before or since slept as well as I did <laughs> after the first day of that conference. That's, that's a, this is an offshoot. But yeah. uh, did you know like chess is like high caloric burn? Like if you're good at chess, you can actually be doing a lot of computation in your head. It's, really? It's quite high caloric burn because you're like really thinking. So you're saying that's why I'm thin because I think a lot and my brain is powerful? That might be part of it. Actually, I, I, we've talked about this. It's probably more to do with the fact that I have ADHD and I'm a fidgeter. And apparently that contributes- it's a really big one actually. Way, way more to your calorie burn than like your metabolism basically right it's, like it's, it's huge yeah i, I don't yeah. remember what it uh um uh, calorie 
Anyway, um, yes, I do often... Non-exercise activity thermogenesis, NEAT, refers to a portion of daily energy expenditure resulting from spontaneous physical activity that is not specifically res the result of voluntary exercise. Le levels of NEAT range widely, with variants of up to 2,000 kilocalories per day between two individuals of similar size. Like, massively impactful, like little fidgets, little bouncing your knee, little doing whatever, it all counts. Everything counts. So, in response to your question, yes, I was reasonably proficient in ASL at some point. I forget a lot. Um, I know enough that, you know, when, I, when I'm at a family function and some of my family's um, deaf friends are there, I can check in, you know, hey, how you doing? And how are the kids? And, you know, that kind of stuff. But um, I'm, I'm at a point now where I've forgotten so much that while I will, while I'll do little things like I will in conversation, uh, you know, describing something that I saw, I'll be like, yeah, so the person was walking and then the car like just missed them. And I'll realize, oh yeah, this is a car to me. This is probably not a car to you. <laughs> oh, interesting. And when I gesture, I do so as you noticed, um, accurately because I am a lot of sign language is not the words but is the relative positions of things so something that trips me up a lot is if you're talking to me and you say um yeah turn right and you gesture vaguely i'll turn left because i wasn't listening i was watching and that's something that i'm probably i guess probably more attuned to than most people so yeah so yvonne and i will have conversations where she'll go uh i'll go hey where are my keys and she'll go they're over there and to her she was going this way and to me she pointed upstairs so i will waste 10 minutes looking for my keys and i'll be like hey i can't find them and she'll be like they're right where i told you and i'm like no you point you <laughs> You pointed up that that matters. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. It, we're good, <laughs> but it's definitely something that has come up more than a few times. Everyone has their things. Um, anyway, one one of my favorite one of my favorite signs, by the way, is not a real sign. It's just like a it's like a it's like a slang thing. Uh, the real sign for understand is like this, and it's kind of like um, like Light bulb. Li like lights flashing. Uh, looks like this. So you kind of like you create manually sensations, right? So yeah, it's it's like a light bulb. Yeah, I understand. Um, but but my but like one of my favorite things ever is uh, this also means understand. So the person standing. <laughs> Oh my god! It's like yeah. What about? Uh, I think you've shown me that one before. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh, the milk? Uh, what's the sign for milk? And then milkin. No, no. Do milk and then move it past your face. What do you? Hold on. What do you? Uh, hold on. Hold on. What are you even no, talking about? Do the sign for milk, and then move yeah. it past in front of your face. It's pasteurized milk. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's the sorry. only. That's the only ASL joke I know. Uh, oh, yeah. <coughs> all right, cool. Wow. Um, Sheesh. Yeah, so do you know why this is three? No. Because this is W. Uh, yeah, so it's little things like that that, yeah, people pick up from time to time. Uh, all right. So someone asked, um, sorry, this is actually fairly important. Uh, Tools of Ponage asked, what's the sign for no cap for real for real bussin'? I have no idea what the <laughs> f that means. <laughs> Signs closing the laptop. It's just a leaving. <laughs> uh, what, what is bussin' again? I can't remember. I actually don't know. It's some Zoomer term. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 think, I think good. I think this is I think it means good. <laughs> is that right? I think it's good. Okay, really, really good. So no, and no, <laughs> no cap is not lying. No lie. For uh, real, for real is just like, yeah, yeah, um, and then good. Yeah. So I'm not be lying. Like I'm being honest, and it's good. Like, or like, like really, um, yeah, I mean, other than just like literally like, 
Is there is there a lie and not lie? Yeah, I think this is lie. I can't remember. Uh, um, it's it's been a long time. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, I yeah. I would just I'll just say completely the wrong word sometimes. Okay, so that's another example. So like like interchange. This is this, like that's. So I I do it often. Um, a lot of them I don't know that they're. Oh necessarily... no! Yeah. So it's like this. Yeah. So I was I, I forget what this is, but it's something. Yeah, this lie. It's close. Um, yeah, so it's, I don't know. It's just little things. There's there's a lot of stuff where I won't necessarily recognize that you're doing sign language because I don't know sign language, so it's hard to recognize. But a, a lot of it just makes a bunch of sense. Like you did the car one, whatever that was. Yeah. My brain doesn't go, this is a car, but I'm like, okay, clearly object. We're discussing car. Yeah. This I'm now going to decide this is a car, and then it does the thing. And it's like, okay. So I still understand everything that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to be able to do that from now on, and I'm just going to burst into <laughs> laughter. <laughs> oh my <Jeez>. goodness. <laughs> the delivery of it was my favorite part. Just a right. slight smile. No, no other reaction. <laughs> okay. Hit us with one more, Dan. Oh, yeah, sure. One sec. Um, let's do this one. Hey, Linus, have you played Sea of Stars yet? I have yet to play it, but I've been looking forward to it since you first talked about it on the WAN show. Considering the size of the team, it's an incredible achievement. Um, I found the art to be mind-blowing. Um, it's such a beautiful game. The music is as good as the art. It's, it's absolutely incredible. Um, I do not understand at all the praise for the combat i found it to be tedious and repetitive um i think that uh, if i had maybe used some of the like the crutches the the modifiers that you can that you can activate uh maybe i would have found it easier but i wasn't looking for easy i like that's one of the things that i like to a degree about classic rpgs is is challenge in particularly boss fights um, but in Sea of Stars, I just found like kind of every encounter was sort of tedious. And, and there's something to be said for being able to get wiped at any moment, like always kind of having that, you know, that thrill of, of that danger, right? Um, but I just, yeah, the, the combat is, is, it seemed really promising right at the beginning. And then I kind of went, oh, that's as interesting as it gets. And there, it's an indie game, you, so you have to keep your expectations realistic, but there wasn't enough playtesting. You'd have boss fights where they, they have this mechanic where um, the bosses will have like kind of a roulette thing, and then you'll have to hit them with... Your uh, pasties uh, falling off over there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no worries. You'll have a roulette thing, and then it'll come up with, you know, a supposedly, I guess, randomized combination of elemental or attack types that you need to hit it with in order to prevent it from unleashing a bigger attack, which is, on the surface, a pretty cool mechanic, except that often, very often, you'd have, like, a two-turn countdown timer, and you'd have to hit it with three strikes of something that you only have two characters, each of which can hit for one and you're just like, well, that's pretty f***ing stupid. Um, or, or you're just unlucky, and that character, you have one turn to do it, and you could do it, but you're just unlucky, and they don't have any MP, and so you can't do it. So it's like, oh, okay, well, I was just wiped because I didn't have the clairvoyance to know that it was going to be that. And in reality, they're not random anyway. Um, they're, they're, they're predetermined as far as I can tell, like there's a, a couple of different variants. So once you kind of get into a rhythm where you, where you know what it's going to be, it's, it's beatable, but it's just tedious because the enemies have too many, too many hit points. Once you understand the mechanic and have solved the puzzle, uh, it, it shouldn't take a long time to finish a, a turn-based fight. Um, and the other big one is that it's a really small world. I didn't find I didn't find it that easy to get immersed in it. There was no need to explore. Um, there's a, there's there's some exploration you can do. Basically, like a, I'm not going to spoil anything, but there's kind of like a long 
tedious fetch quest where you can go look for all of some kind of collectible item. Um, and it does a thing that realistically, I just looked up. I was like, okay, what happens? And then when I found out what happens, I was like, oh, that's really stupid because um, one of the best things about this game and its story, um, I'd, I don't like it when storytellers chicken out. Uh, I think that Rowling chickened out when Harry Potter didn't die. Yeah. He was a lamb raised for slaughter, and then she didn't f***ing kill him. It's like, okay, well, that's stupid. Um, you know, you, you had an opportunity to to do something really emotionally impactful, and you're like, okay, how about one of the one of the Weasleys instead? Let's not go after one of the main three. Let's 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 kill a Weasley twin. Um, yeah. yeah, and I, and you know, I'm just, I just, I, I think it, I think it sucks. I think that Encanto is a beautiful movie with great music and amazing visuals. And at the end, spoiler alert, I guess, I don't know, whatever, uh, spoiler alert for Encanto, uh, at the end, the, the family learns their lesson that the magic was, was love or whatever. And then they get their magical powers back. Or like the magic was love and community and that was that was what made them special. And then they just get their just actual magic back. So at the they've learned nothing then. There was no loss. It was just reset to the beginning of the movie, but yeah. now Mirabelle is happy or something. Yeah. Like it just Yeah, yeah, I've got yeah, I've got people talking about Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like just have a backbone. Let something bad happen. Let it be bittersweet. Let it not be just... Oh, wow. Uh, Elijah is very animated about this. I stood up and walked out of the room yelling out of anger. Had a chance to be one of the best movies. Yeah. No, you're, you're 100% right. Because... I've never seen it. You can tell. You can tell the movie was supposed to end there. That's the big one, is when I can tell what was supposed to happen. And then someone with... Oh, we can't do that? Someone with no primary or secondary sexual characteristics, okay, came into the meeting. Well, no, you, you can't say balls, you know. <laughs> you always impress me. <laughs> always, always impress me. <laughs> Should have waited until he was drinking. Okay. <laughs> Someone walked in the room and went... No, this might make people actually feel something. And it's like, forget it. Oh. Bail. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, yeah Encanto and, and Harry Potter, I think, are probably my favorite examples of that, where they just chickened out. There's a bunch, but yeah, those, oh. are, those are strong ones. Those are recent and hugely culturally significant. Yes, yeah, exactly. But yeah, it's definitely like a thing that happens. Uh, all right yeah um oh let's uh yeah let's do you a topic were, you were talking about oh, um, let's not do a topic yeah you were talking about what, what was the name of the game again sea of stars um final fantasy 6 been playing more of it oh yeah yeah oh you don't like it anymore no i do like it i don't like doing it three times Oh, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember what you're talking about. I, hold I, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, I didn't so you, say it you, on the stream, but you do know. Hold on. Oh, that. I don't think I said on the stream. I yet. thought. I thought you meant something to do with the game. No. Yeah. Okay. Game's been pretty good. I yeah. do think three times you had another crash. I had one more crash. Oh. And then I stopped playing it. Tried to figure out what was going on. Couldn't figure out what was going on. It was only crashing in Final Fantasy VI, which again is just weird that's random um but i i uh i just nuked all my drivers even though i'm not reinstalling the card and it was completely fine for like half a year i just nuked all my drivers as, as clean as i possibly could reinstalled everything and i'm gonna try it again this weekend and see how it goes but i lost like an hour and then i lost like almost the same amount of progress but i think like half an hour this time or something because yeah. i knew it was going on that's really annoying um I do, yeah, I, I do think this, the part of the game that I'm currently in is, feels a little bit less engaging than what I just got through. Um, I was at, like, the big fight, 
when they're like trying to assault the town that you're in yeah. or whatever. Um, I beat that. That was cool. There's a lot of lead up to that. That was all really exciting. And now like I'm not quite as engaged as I was, but it's still good. I'm at like, what is it to play Zozo or something? Oh, oh, uh, gets real. Okay. Pretty soon. Yeah. I started getting smacked around a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. The, the fight was actually really easy. No, no, that uh, that's fine. Zozo's a real challenge. Yeah. Um, they, they hit hard. Yeah. And all of a sudden you have to like figure out magic. Yeah. Yep. I'm running into that. But it keeps, like, dying. The game, the game deletes my progress while I'm in Zozo. I love the music in Zozo. The music's pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to figure out. I can tell there's, like, something going on that I don't understand. But then I, I don't know if I've gotten to the point where I can actually understand it. Because I haven't finished Zozo because it yeah. keeps crashing. Um, but there's, like, all the people keep talking about the second hand. Yeah. And stuff. Don't, like, I'm not trying to yeah. i'm gonna ignore chat for a little while yeah zozo's but, zozo's a weird place yeah yeah there's some weird stuff going on i have you know picked up on a few things like the town before everybody tells you they're liars and then you show up and they tell you very specific things yeah so it's like okay i'll just do the opposite or whatever and then that's been working out yeah but i think there's other stuff going on um i just haven't had enough time to like really explore it and figure it out yet but. fox in a box reminded me of how to train your dragon yeah i kind of just pretend the third movie doesn't exist yeah. Uh, the first two are incredible. How to Train Your Dragon 1 is one of my all-time favorite movies. I think they just... I... I don't see how it was possible for them to deviate that much from the source <clears throat> material and still make such an absolute banger of a movie. Do you like the source material? It's great. Yeah, yeah. Have you read it? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it's great. I've watched great. the movie and it was great, but it, I haven't read it. It's great in its own way, but to give you some idea how different it is, Toothless... Okay, for okay for one thing, okay, to give you some idea how different it is, the Vikings and the dragons are coexisting already at the very beginning of How to Train Your Dragon, the book series. I haven't watched it in a long time, but isn't that like the plot of the first one or something? Yeah, that they don't. Yeah. Yeah. So... <laughs> Toothless is this big um, and like lives in Hiccup's shirt. Um, That's pretty different. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool though. Yeah. Did I'd, they so, work with the writer to like make a derivative or did they just come up with it on their own? Uh, I don't know if Cressida Cowell, Crowell, 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 I can't remember her name, uh, but uh, I, I don't know how involved she was in the movies, but they are completely different um but they did they did the typical movie thing so the the books end well um and but they did the typical movie uh, thing where in the third one it's just like yeah there's a sad ending and then they're just like fail <laughs> yeah i hate that i don't know i saw some people talking about how they're kids movies you know they're you're not the target audience it's like right but the kids media that I remember so much had sadness. It had emotion. Like one of, one of uh, maybe, no, I, I think it's fair to say one of my favorite movies when I was a kid was the land before time. That is a devastating. It has, it, it's emotionally. Yeah. People are already pointing it out. One of the most like quintessential obvious examples is Bambi. Yeah. Doesn't come back alive. Nope. <laughs> no, mama's dead. Yeah. Yeah. Man, Lion King. Yeah, Mufasa is like, he's fucking dead. You can't undo that shit, you know? Yeah. Like this whole just like, I don't know, uh, uh, time travel, uh, uh, resurrection, uh, uh, just undo the negative effects. Like, yeah, nah, man. Anyway, uh, we're supposed to do sponsor spots, apparently. apparently. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. <laughs> what do we got? I fix it. The show is sponsored by iFixit. Linus, talk about our past relationship with him. Yeah, man. iFixit has been a huge supporter. And For a long time. I would have said of the show, but what I mean to say is they've been a supporter in a bigger way than just the show. iFixit is one of the sponsors that I think we are probably most aligned with in yeah. terms of our beliefs and our goals as a company. Um, and like every time I've seen them do pretty much anything, I'm like, yeah. It's, it's the That's right cool. thing to do, whether whether it's their products, whether it's their partnerships. Yeah. Uh, the fact that, man, the, when, when Valve 
announced that oh, you'd, be, so sick. you'd have access to so sick to to third well uh, excuse me first party parts yeah. to service your steam deck when i found out that it was i going to be through i fixed it i was like man confidence level through the roof exactly yeah. because they have one of those brands that's just when they're involved you know that someone who cares is working on it. Yeah. Um, so, so the things that they do that we love, they promote the repairability of electronics. They promote the reduction of e-waste. Uh, we're looking forward to many more years of partnership. Um, and right now, oh, this is cool. Hey, speaking of what we were talking about earlier on the show with the whole, um, this time of year, there's like deals and stuff. You can get 25% off of iFixit bundles, like the Ooh. Gamer Bundle or the Popular Pro Tech Bundle. I was just going to say. Just by checking them out at the link below. And you can save an additional 10% when you buy any spare part. That's another big one for me with iFixit is unlike just buying something random on eBay or Amazon, which you can do, when I buy something from iFixit, if it's an adhesive strip or uh, a pack of you know screws or whatever else it is, it's it's the it's the brand name replacement part but the prices are reasonable yeah so check them out i fix it i didn't have much in the way of talking points but i guess it doesn't matter because we just really love the products we use them a lot um and we love the mission that that's the big thing i mean nobody's perfect i'm sure someone somewhere has some criticism of something about i fix it's something sure. but at the end of the day i think their hearts are in the right place they make great stuff and we we support that i've never seen this before and it's not even on sale but their repair business toolkit is sick which one it's up on my screen i don't know if we want to finish yeah yeah i've seen that that's, oh yeah it's super cool it it's comes so with like a little bit of everything all you inclusive need. yeah Yep. Wow. Wow. I didn't even know they made those. Yep. Very cool. Anyways, moving on. The show is also brought to you by SignalWire. Requiring someone to work 24-7 nonstop? <laughs> Our sponsor, SignalWire, has a secret weapon for that. Okay, where are we going with this? <laughs> oh, with their new AI voice agent. You can grow your business without ha a hassle. The AI agent can be used for call routing, lead scoring as a virtual receptionist, and more. So things like scheduling appointments, answering questions, or forwarding calls, you don't need to worry about. SignalWire's AI agent is also multilingual. It's capable of understanding and responding in over 40 languages beyond a scripted format, and it can simulate natural human conversation so well that even scammers can end up cool uh, cooled fooled embedding an agent into an application is super easy you can utilize their no code drag and drop tools or their robust api for more customization so try it out now by going to signalwire at the link down below let the ai agent help you work smarter rather than harder also the show is brought to you by v1 tech don't call yourself an RGB master if your room looks like a museum. Our sponsor, V1 Tech, is here to spice up your walls with some Ooh. color from their new RGB shadow box. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that is cool, actually. That's super cool. Wow. It's pretty straightforward. The box is handcrafted in Dallas and uses fully addressable RGB to give you creative freedom. Not to mention, their RGB lights shine up to 30% brighter than comparable frames. And with the upcoming Signal RGB software controller, you'll be able to sync it seamlessly with your gaming setup. It not only makes your room come to life, but will help your mood light up like a Christmas tree, too. You can easily insert whatever art you like. They've got over 10,000 art designs, and you can even put your face on it. Oh, good. <laughs> you can choose from three different color frames, ash natural wood, black wood, or white wood, and get 50% off for their holiday sale, plus $10 off your order with code LINUS10. So check out V1 Tech at the link down below. Hilarious. Epic. All right. We've got to do the whole set in those. What are we supposed to be doing next? Three merge messages. What, really? Oh, no, let's do a topic. Let's do a topic. Okay, sold. Yeah, we took so long. <laughs> yes, you did. Epic finally wins. A sort jury of. has sided with Epic in their lawsuit against Google, agreeing that Google used anti-competitive business practices to maintain the Play Store's dominant position in the Android app distribution market. So how is that possible, but they lost to Apple? Okay, so as far as I can tell, it came down to... Oh, here, look, it's in our notes. Epic lost a similar battle against Apple, which it is currently appealing to the Supreme Court. A major distinction between the two fights seems to be that while Apple just disallowed competitors from its platform outright oh. google suppressed competition through behind the scenes deals while technically allowing third-party app stores google executives also made the error of writing things <laughs> down and attempting but failing to delete the evidence 
So it Sick. turns out you just have to be even more of a monopolist and then it's not a problem. Yeah. I would prefer the just not allowing. I, I, would, I would actually say if I had to pick one. And apparently the jury agrees. Apples. Well, I think they're both wrong. But. Google is likely to appeal the ruling. However, this marks the first major antitrust decision in the U.S. since the one against Microsoft over 23 years ago. Yeah, and there should have definitely been a lot more. Can I just say I'm rooting for a lot more? Yeah, like for real, man. Apple, meanwhile, is likely to get hit with an EU ban on the App Store's current anti-steering rules that ban music services from pushing users towards alter alternate subscription options. The European Council is also investigating Apple's restrictions on its tap-and-go combined payment feature. In response, Apple has offered to open the feature up to Apple Pay competitors. I think that between the U.S. finally recognizing Google's nonsense and the EU continuing the to EU's just awesome to just they just win completely understand what Apple's doing. Time. Everything Apple is doing is pretty much to maintain its stranglehold on the walled garden ecosystem. I, I don't know what group of people in the EU because I I don't pay attention. There's enough stuff going on in Canada. Um, I don't know what group of people is like championing these things within that governing body but damn doing yeah. good work <laughs> absolute giga chads <laughs> yeah um and I, I can't say i'm the biggest fan of epic and yeah. you know no, i'm not saying everything tim sweeney has ever done is um nope good at all um some of it's great yeah this is great even uh e even my my one personal toe to toe with him i ended up being more right than um, I was led to believe I was. I was I was treated like I was completely wrong, and I was wrong about a lot of things. The PS5's you know SSD architecture was very cool, and I you know was probably dismissive of it in a way that I shouldn't have been, and I would have understood better if you know blah blah blah. I had watched Mark Cerny's presentation, and and I corrected all of that, and I was I was wrong about a lot of things. But what I wasn't wrong about was that Sweeney was clearly sucking Sony's. Dick over it uh, in a way that seemed disproportionate. And then what was it? Was it two weeks later? I think so. A week later, Somewhere it came out there. that Sony had made a huge investment into Epic Games. It was really fast. So like, even though I got some of the details wrong, my bullshit detector was 100% yeah. calibrated. The core of the argument, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but but with that said, the way that they've gone about this, like I, we shouldn't just like crap on the good things that they're doing because we haven't agreed with someone over everything yeah. they've ever done in the past, and they have clearly not accepted a ruling that just helps Epic Games. They have clearly drawn a line that says no, we want a solution for the entire ecosystem that just breaks down the walls around these gardens, whether they are explicit walls or hidden walls and just cut the bullshit. Like yeah. the, the funny thing is that's how it always used to work. You could buy a, an application is what we used to call it from anywhere. And there was competition in the marketplace and you could install it on your freaking computer. And then we just all kind of lost track of that because, Oh no, this is, I don't know. It's a phone. It's not a computer. It's a computer. None of this matters. You can get it any, get the application anywhere. And there are ways to ensure that these applications are just as it's important. safe as if they were purchased through the Play down. Store, through an App Store. I don't know. Well, you've got the tabby bit. And I feel like if it came undone, but the tabby bit was done, it would just flap like this. Yeah, but having but then, it on the bottom, they just get hinged But over. if I wanted my... Uh, what, what's the point of these? Right, right, right. But then if I wanted my cleavage to show, I wouldn't want the tabs there. Oh. I don't know. Maybe they're supposed to go on the side. I'm I'm just not sure. No, he No, the, no, the tab, Dan. We're talking about what the tab is for. Yeah. The top. To the top. But then but then what if what if you have a low cut? Yeah. It's not for that. Oh. Oh. Sorry. There you go. Now you look better. <laughs> Is this a serious podcast? I had is a this moment, a podcast? I had a moment like 20, 30 okay. minutes ago. Hold on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to let you finish. Okay. But okay. what? This comes up a lot. 
what the f*** is the difference between this and a podcast? <laughs> People looked- keep telling me the WAN show is not a podcast. And honestly, I, admittedly, I don't watch podcasts. I don't listen. Excuse me. I don't listen to them. What is the difference? How many podcasts? There's, are, there's literally no difference. There's this is a, technically there, a podcast. We post the audio to all of the podcasting sites. I was just going to say, I'm literally in charge of dealing with all of the back backline systems for the yeah. podcast version of this. And some of them, we even just upload the whole video. You can watch the WAN show with video on Spotify, which I didn't even know was a thing. Really? You didn't know that? I didn't, I didn't know that. that. Spotify sent me a Christmas present. That? Oh, that's nice. Yeah, apparently we're like a creator on that platform now. I was like, who the f*** are you when like the rep reached out? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> no. He not, didn't say it that S. way. Oh, we just left. No, I mean, that's way more words than I type in emails. Yeah. We went through this last week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, no, we just, uh, we just technically left Spotify. Yeah, that's like, that's like five whole words. We left Spotify. <laughs> We're on different, more better Spotify oh, now. What's, yeah. what's that? I, it's th- still... What is it? I don't know if we're going to talk about it or not, but really? maybe. I thought you had been mentioned. We're, we're still on Spotify. We're still on Spotify. We are? Yeah. Well, but what? it's more better. What? It, we changed the way that we're on Spotify. Well, what's that? It, none of this matters. Oh, okay. So we're not having a business meeting on WAN Show? Do you want to have a business meeting on WAN Show? Theoretically, yeah, what it, is should, it? it should get on there faster. Is this confidential? Because people I have no idea. Are, I don't think so. Okay. We get, a, we get a lot of we get a lot of negative feedback when the WAN show goes up like the next week on Spotify. Yeah. But no one wants to work on it over the weekend. Um, yeah, it's amazing how that works. People are super mad when there's a perception that we have crunch or overwork our employees, but they're even more mad yes. when the WAN show doesn't miraculously get posted instantly on the weekend when it's like still so, processing or whatever it's a, it's a funny thing right it's like what i don't know what do you guys want <laughs> well the new system should allow us i uh, should allow me uh to post it immediately after the wan show yeah tacky the penguin says just pay someone to work on the weekend what if they don't f-ing want to work on the weekend you're already paying me i'm already here did you ever think of that yeah so it should be it should be faster now mm-hmm. and there's other cool benefits there is um, I, and i think it goes on more more platforms now? I right? don't think so. It's just Same a centralized now? platform, so yeah. that we don't have to have seven hundred thousand accounts. Yeah, and it is a Spotify uh, partner thing. It's called Megaphone. Yeah, so it gets distributed out from them. Oh, okay, by them. Okay, so still Spotify. We right. just one one source. It do the thing. Now Dan doesn't have to go boop de boop as many times. I don't even touch it. That's other people. Yeah, it's like five other people for multiple hours to produce the podcast version of the live broadcast version of the whatever the show this is yeah i don't the talk show it's a talk show that's a live stream and it's also a podcast and it's snowing on the banner yeah i love it who knows was that a, a good business meeting goodbye yeah it was a pretty good business meeting um realistically guys yes we we could have someone work a 20 minute shift on oh wait no No, we can't do that because that's illegal yeah okay so hold on no we could have someone do a a tuesday to saturday um except what would they what would they do for the rest of their day nobody else is in office and i guarantee you they don't want to do that Uh, yeah almost almost nobody wants to give up and what if they have a problem well then they're gonna call me yeah yeah great perfect guess what i don't want to work on saturday yeah Um, and you know what there are things that we do do on weekends but they are it's not supposed to be a scheduled thing to happen every single yeah like this this sunday we're coming in to shoot a video but the only reason we're doing that is because the video is about upgrading our infrastructure which is something we can't do yeah i was just gonna say every once in a while dan or sean or just sean or just dan or whatever will Mm -hmm. have to come in to do some form of infrastructure thing because you you don't want downtime while people are here like it happens but it's not something you want to schedule like and i think it being should be recurring schedule it being recurringly scheduled like that would I think be a, an issue legally, right? It's this is, like this is hilarious. Maybe? People are yeah. people are flipping out in float plane chat. You can't schedule someone to work for a single hour in Canada. No, no. You like see, a guys, hour minimum or guys. Something? I think this is where a lot of the miscommunication around the union thing comes from. We have really strong worker protections here, like just at all. No, I no, you can't do that because it's not considered reasonable for someone to commute to and from a place of work. And then only be scheduled for a very short shift. I believe the minimum is four hours. Um, 
And so, you know, above and beyond that, we do a lot. And all I've ever said, I've never said, you know, they can't because I can't say that because that's illegal. Um, all I've ever said is that I would consider it a failure. I would think that we screwed up if people felt that that was necessary. It and looks like it's, I thought it, I swear it was four, but it looks like it's two. Oh, okay. It might also depend. But like that would also be a super lame thing to do. Well, yeah. So like you don't want to do that. Even if we could do that, we wouldn't. It's yeah. stupid. Yeah. Uh, yeah yeah guys it's just it's man it's anyway yeah I, I just looked up the hours of work and overtime for british columbia and it says two i i totally had the understanding that it was four i think the four might be like if you're scheduled for a shift and then you get there and you're there for 20 minutes and they go oh actually we don't need you today uh, we have to, you have to pay out four. So is that it? If they try to send yeah. you home. Yeah. Yeah, that might be it. Okay. Four hours minimum, even if they have nothing for you to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know, guys. It, yeah, it's, we could. But there's another factor. It's a relatively low priority. Yeah. And now it doesn't even matter. Yeah, you could get it on YouTube. You could get it on Floatplane. Yeah. Uh, we had people asking why the Floatplane one is delayed, and that's just because of processing time. Processing time. We don't have YouTube magic. We don't do live oh. processing stuff. It's kind of cool. The the YouTube stuff? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's super cool. Yeah. We, we don't have that super cool. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe someday, maybe not. All right. Uh, what else are we supposed to be talking about right now? Oh, I love this. Tesla demands statute of limitations on lying. Yeah, this is amazing. That moment, like this is some supreme level gaslighting stuff right here. Uh, I didn't lie, but if I did, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Because it was a long time ago. Uh, following a two-year investigation, the California Department of Motor Vehicles is accusing Tesla of misleading advertising concerning its full self-driving feature, something that I'd like to point out that we were calling them on many years before the Department of Motor Vehicles brought it up. And Tesla thinks that delay for them to bring it up is a really big deal. Tesla argues that it relied on the assumption that the DMV tacitly accepted its marketing because Tesla started using the term full self-driving in 2016 and the DMV didn't act until 2021. Wow. <laughs> Tesla also claims that California's false advertising rules for autonomous vehicles inappropriately restrict constitutionally protected speech that is truthful and non-misleading. <laughs> So because no one called you on your bullshit for a long time, you should get off. Now, there are things that work that way. Like we had talked before about how, um, I believe this came up when we were talking about uh, React streamers, where uh, yeah. there are actually rules in place where if you know that someone is infringing your copyright, you have to defend it. And you intentionally allow them to continue to do it for a long time so that you can seek additional damages. Um, that can that can blow up in your face and you you can lose that because you didn't do anything about it but this is different there is no increase in damages that the dmv is after they're just saying you can't do that um i don't know maybe the damn well, well, i actually don't know what damages they're after i have no idea Okay, forget that. Huh, yeah, what would, the, what would the difference be here? That's very interesting. <sighs> Could they make the argument that they, you know, didn't know or realize the extent of it? They needed to conduct their investigation? I th this is going to be, this is going to be an interesting one. There is weird stuff, because like, do you remember, yeah. do you remember that... I'm gonna I'm gonna offshoot here a little bit for a sec, but do you remember that whole thing where the subway sandwiches were not actually a foot long, and they said that foot long was just like the name, not a descriptor, and all that kind of stuff. They ended up losing that, and they're they're an actual foot long now. Um, mm. So like there there was a bunch of that going on at that time. I, if I remember correctly, there was like fresh never frozen from some other place, 
I don't know if that's the exact tagline, but it was something along those lines. And they was were that like, Tim Hortons? Maybe it was. I don't know. Mm. I, don't, I don't remember. It was, it was one of them that was something mm. like that. Um, I don't remember if it was exactly that. Don't look too far into it. Um, but they were like, yeah, 100% real Canadian beef, something like that, is also a company, not a tagline. Yeah, like that's... <laughs> That's crazy. It's like, that's the name of our company. That doesn't actually mean anything. It's like, okay, come on. Like th- this type of stuff is not, maybe that's the one I was thinking of. I don't know. Um, but this type of stuff is not really super new, but it is definitely super BS. Mm. Okay. Well, at any rate, uh, good luck with that, everyone. Uh, we're supposed to do three merch messages now. Dan, you want to hit me? Oh, I heard his chair move. I yeah. thought he, was, he thought he was coming over here. <laughs> I didn't think I did anything that bad today. I'm so ready to go. Oh, I'm ready. I've been preparing for this. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, hey, LLD. We know Linus has cameras in his house. Linus, that's creepy. Uh, Linus, what went into your decision to include them? Uh, did you have discussions with the family about privacy? Keep up the great work. Um. Yeah, I mean... The decisions to include them, I think when we first installed them was when we first got a nanny, like a, like an outside of our family nanny. Um, and we were very upfront with them that we had them when we hired them. Like we got them in advance of hiring the nanny so that it wouldn't be a, a weird change, a, a surprise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we, we just wanted the peace of mind of knowing what the heck was going on in our house. Um, and it's been so useful for everything from figuring out which cat is peeing on things to uh, where I left my keys to what actually happened when two kids come to me with different stories that I just don't see how I would ever go back at this point. I thought it was going to be super weird when you first set it up and then I was like, eh, whatever. I don't know. Like realistically... You've probably, hmm, how do I say this? You've probably said things in my house that if they leaked on the internet, you wouldn't be happy about it. Probably. And yeah, that could mean anything. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, I, I think we have enough mutual trust that that doesn't matter. Um, and I, I think I that's probably a pretty big part of it. Like, I don't know. I don't know how I'd feel like if I just went over to someone's house and they like didn't tell me about it and I like noticed partway through. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And, or if it's someone that you don't know and you're exactly. not. Yeah. Okay. Um, yours, I think something that helps is they have that blue thing. Yeah. They're like very like, they're not hiding. Yeah. Whenever there's motion, they. Yeah. They're like they very go. much like, hey, re- reminder that I'm here. Like they're not, they, they, it doesn't feel like you're trying to sneak the cameras. Um, but if I figured out like uh, way into a night of hanging out that like this person had a recording of the entire thing and I didn't really know this person all that well and stuff, that might be weird. Yeah. It's technically legal here. Yeah. We're a, we're a single party consent um, territory. Yeah. But it's still considered uh i don't know if i would say taboo but it's it's still definitely considered odd um yes. to yeah. just you know be recording pull things. out your phone and record a conversation like it's it's clear you expect something to go down um i don't know man i it's 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 mostly just a convenience thing for me the the reality of it is that cameras don't do anything to protect you from theft the only the only outcome the only somewhat positive outcome we've had from um a break-in that we had at the office a number of years ago was that they ultimately did catch the guy but we didn't get anything back yeah uh we we still had to pay out our insurance because everything they confiscated was evidence (laughs) it's like okay cool so they're like yeah you should probably just like go through your insurance because it could be years before you get this stuff back because the courts move slow it's like okay thanks for that that's really great (laughs) super cool uh anyway i i I don't remember where we're going with this dan you want to hit me again yeah sure we'll do that uh that top one there sure Uh, what is the most legitimate hard-hitting or cutting bit of criticism you have received from your viewers oh man the most legitimate it's hard to say because when we get f- 
feedback that I think is really legitimate, we try to act on it. Um, and it, uh, hard hitting. I think the most hard hitting thing could is going to be something that seems relatively simple on the surface. Like this is boring. Um, I don't know about that. I definitely, I definitely took it to heart in a big way when people were rightly critical of us for um, doing that, that sponsored video with Facebook on the portal. It was a product that for the purpose that it served, it served its purpose. It was a video calling machine for video calling people on Facebook, but from a price to performance standpoint, you know, aside from it doing what they said it was going to do, it's not like I, it's not like anyone here felt it was the best possible solution for that. And we did all of our usual things where we, we went out of our way to not say anything that we don't believe. Um, we included talking points clearly presented as talking points. Um, but people were were upset with us working with Facebook at all. And so that's something that we have, that's something that changed the way that we looked at sponsor engagements back then and has persisted up until now. Um, I don't know if we've had many opportunities, if any, to work with Facebook on, you know, product hardware or sponsorships or anything like that, but uh, I'm not aware of us having done so. That doesn't mean that we don't work with Facebook at all. I mean, we post our videos on their platform, so they, they write us checks. Um, I know we did a thing where they had like this, um, it was like a podcast thing or like, like spaces or something. I forget what it was even called, but we had like some guests and we did, we did like a sponsored series there. Uh, but people made it very clear that especially with what was going on with, uh, Meta, then Oculus, um, and Facebook, and the way that they were handling all of that, that they were really unhappy with Facebook's sort of hardware division and didn't want us working with them. So, you know, that's something. Um, I've got to say, uh, a lot of our, I feel like a lot of our transparency in sponsorships has kind of bitten us in the butt. I think that people see us talk about sponsorships a lot and talk about our relationships with companies a lot and then assume that, you know, everything they see is just the tip of the iceberg. And for every one thing that we disclose, there's probably 10 that we don't. Uh, one thing that was really frustrating recently was the amount of negative feedback we took over our PlayStation portal review. I was really upfront that I'm bullish on these devices. I think they're super cool. Um, I think that for the audience, the PlayStation portal is a solution that could make sense. I think the pricing makes sense on a hardware level. Realistically, you are not at the required margins of a you know publicly traded company like Sony and its various retail partners, you're not building a device for less than two hundred dollars that does that stuff. We expressed our our doubts about the future of the device if Sony keeps it locked down, and optimism about the community jailbreaking it. And we said everything that we had to say about it. And the number of people that have looked at that video and gone obvious shill paid by Sony uh, has been really discouraging because. We haven't talked about this, but we explicitly turned down a sponsorship for the PlayStation Portal. We've actually never, to my knowledge, worked with Sony in a sponsored capacity, and it's possible that a deal or two has happened that I'm not aware of. Sure. But Don't I'm worry. not aware of any, and we specifically didn't take any money on the PlayStation Portal because we were concerned about the optics of us liking it talking about it positively when we knew that there was a subset of people that were really angry about it. And we kind of went, yeah, this is not the right thing for our audience. And we need to make sure that we keep this one purely editorial. And then to have that like thrown in our faces was, um, I, I just don't really know what to make of it. I, 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 I don't understand the whole situation. It's like, can you imagine for a second, a product that wasn't made for you? Yeah. I, I I've brought this up before, but related to, uh, reviews of different technology, but like having every single person in your entire sphere say the exact same is not actually uh, say the exact same thing is not actually a good 
experience. You you want people to show different opinions. And just because you're like a Xbox fanboy or a PC fanboy uh, and it's not for you doesn't mean it didn't sell out like immediately. And every person that I know that owns a PlayStation bought one and is also happy with it. Well, just the super flawed logic, right? Like I saw I people know. talking about how this isn't a $200 device. It's a $700 device because you also need a PlayStation 5. <clears throat> what the fuck are you talking about? You already have a PlayStation so have 5 a PlayStation or you wouldn't 5. be buying this. Do you need to buy another one now? Like, no. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's not a product for me. That's like saying a tank a of gas costs $25,000 because you have to have a car to put it in. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> the like little tree air freshener <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. that's a really good analogy actually um. like it's just, i just don't know how to deal with it right and it's it's really funny because so much of the of the conspiracy theory this must have been sponsored stuff that gets posted about us is from people who so obviously don't understand how brands work and how sponsorships work that I, I just don't really know how to even begin to correct it, right? Like we talk openly in that video about jailbreaking the portal. Do you imagine for a f***ing second that any executive at Sony would green like that? Are you f***ing stupid? Honestly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, wow. <laughs> you know? <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's not how that works. That's not how any of that works. Brands are so cautious about their image and about controlling their messaging, guys, that think about it. They will pull their advertising off of a platform just because there might be a risk that their completely separate ad might show near something that they find incompatible with their brand. Yeah. Come on, you know, come on. Common sense. It's, it's hard. It's really hard. Um, it's not that hard, please. <laughs> I can't. Um, yeah. So, so, you know, I think, the hardest hitting, sorry, back to the original question. I got completely derailed here. Hardest hitting, um, but legitimate. Yeah, Luke's probably right when the content sucks. It's the, it and we know it's time to burns, innovate and dude. it's hard. Yeah, Especially when you try it on something and then a not insignificant amount of people are like, eh. it's like, oh man, uh, They've been going down lately. It's like, damn, dude. Like, I actually put effort into this one. If you did just, like, yeah. fart it out, then sure, whatever. Maybe yeah, the problem is it, that a lot but. of the time, the fart out stuff is what performs really well. And the stuff we work really hard on. Like, the PlayStation... My best performing video of all time was a fart out. Dude, the PlayStation Portal, we worked really hard on. Yeah. We, we crunched. Um, we didn't get it till late. Um, we... Because there was the sponsorship opportunity, we... Uh, we had to have meetings internally to kind of talk about whether this makes sense and, and if we should proceed. Um, we, we wanted to test it in a way that was meaningful, given that reviews of the device were already out before we even got access to ours. So we wanted to, we wanted to you know, up our game and make sure we were doing a very comprehensive look at it, including uh, pickups after we had shot it to address new information that had come to light, like information about the SOC. Uh, but so much of the criticism about that video was just utterly unfair. Like I, I was taken to task at, uh, by a number of people over talking about how it has storage. It doesn't have any storage. Of course it has fucking storage. What else does the operating system run on? I included storage in, in my bill. Of, I included storage in my bill of materials. Because, of course it has storage! What, do you think the bits are magic? I'm sorry, I keep talking about this, but like... What are you talking about? You might not have it access. It costs money! Yeah, you might not even have access to it. Yeah. But it's still there. It's still there. They still have to pay for it. Yeah. It's not magic. Yeah. Jeez, man. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway. <laughs> Come on, man. The OS isn't storage. No, but it sits on it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. 
It's bill of materials. They had to buy a thing that you can put data on to put inside the PlayStation Portable. It doesn't mean you can use it. It's yeah. just all wire memory. <laughs> oh, yeah, wire memory. Thank you, Dan. Um, <laughs> it all operating system. <laughs> Do you want another merch message? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, hi, DLL. Given some of the messes AMD has managed to make, even as the nice guy of the graphics industry, what would happen mm. if NVIDIA really does leave the graphics and Radeon becomes the big dog in town? <sighs> they would do exactly what they did in CPUs and they would stomp all over you and maximize their profits for their shareholders. I mean, they're a corporation, right? That's what they do. And before you say it, yes, Linus Media Group Incorporated is also a corporation, but there's a very big difference between a company with many, many shareholders and a, and a complex corporate structure and one that has two shareholders who sleep together. Yvonne and I are pretty aligned on things, and if we decide that our corporation can just, you know, make less money because we feel like it's the right thing to do, then we can do that. But that's not something that a company with a fiduciary responsibility to its shareholders can do. So it's not quite the same thing. But also, corporations are not your friends. Any of them. Trust but verify. Is there any other sort of things that we should remind people of? Don't pre-order. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, I, th I think that one's pretty good. P don't people buy a PlayStation often... Portal if you don't have a f***ing PlayStation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe you're right. It's not for you. Maybe it is a bad product for you. Maybe it's a, a bad product. I don't even know. Yeah. I, I have no interest in it because I don't have a PlayStation. Yeah. <laughs> so why do I care? But my job is to put myself in the head of someone who might be interested in that product. Yeah. And people with PlayStations really liked the review. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh man! I don't know. Sorry. Okay. I'm I done. was unsure about it uh, because people were mad at you about it, and I was like, "Does this matter?" And I checked in with friends that have PlayStations, and they're like, "No, I, I, I got one. Seems pretty all right." I'm like, <laughs> oh, uh, okay. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, what are we supposed to be doing right now? I don't know. We're way off track. Uh, yeah, you I'm can either topic. Yeah, go back Wait, to topics. What's this yeah. segment? What oh. is Adver Games? I have uh, the Adver Games segment if you would like to <laughs> okay. participate. Okay. Yeah. All Can right. we play Adver Games? You get to play Adver Games. Nice. We'll probably do with the top one and the bottom one first, or you can start with the middle one. One of them requires a laptop, the other one requires an Xbox. Um, why don't you just tell us what to do, because I think my brain is basically fried. Today was a really long day. Let's just go in order. We did. No, the order makes it more complicated. We did oh, a tech upgrade. Don't. For Electro Boom. Oh, cool. It's... That's probably sick. He hugged me. Oh, that's cool. The upgrade was that good. Did he do it while electrified? No, actually. Oh, wow. I mean, he did that too, obviously. <laughs> but no, no, it was... He said this was, this was, this, this is crazy because I think it's so easy to get stuck in our bubble of just, you know, we... Three FPS here and, you know, uh, everyone... Everyone, I don't, I don't know what bubble it is, but just the bubble where we live and breathe technology and it's mind boggling to us that other people don't, you know? Um, he said to me, I thought lag was just part of life because uh, he was scrubbing the timeline on his new PC and it was instant. It was just fluid. And he was like, this is going to help me so much. Um, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's an interesting character. I love Mehdi. He's nice. just he's one great. of the most genuine people. Yeah. Um, so down to earth, you know, he's got 6 million subscribers. Like the guy's, the guy's huge, right? Like, you know, he's the kind of guy where, you know, great his, his kid's friends come over and want selfies with their dad, right? Like, you know, <laughs> like he's huge and he's just a normal dude. Super nice dude, super cool dude. Uh, but sometimes he does drive me crazy a little bit because he doesn't make investments that to me as a technophile are kind of obvious. And he just, you know, tolerates things not working. And this, I'm just this one like... is constantly weird and confusing to me. I'll hear about some creator that's like massive 
And it's like, what's their like data storage solution? It's like eight USB hard drives. And it's like, what? Yeah. What? Yeah, because imagine this. Some people have a life outside of tinkering with their computers. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know. Fake. It's illegal. <laughs> but it's so, it's so hard, I think, for us. And, and I'm including myself and him and you guys. It's so hard for us to imagine that other people don't want to build a computer on the weekend. That that is just the last thing that they want to do. They want to go climb a mountain yeah. or they want to go uh, for dinner with friends in person or they, whatever, right? They want to game on their PlayStation 5 on their portal, which is a perfectly legitimate product to buy if it solves a problem for you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Right. Like there's, there, yeah. there's, there's other things that other people prioritize other than doing things with their computers and with technology. And so, you know, but, but that doesn't mean that I don't love it and that I don't love sharing that excitement and that passion and seeing people appreciate the things that I spend my time on uh, is really cool. And, you know, hearing that was, uh, it was awesome. It's a great video. I think there's going to be a ton of float plane exclusives. Is it a AMD tech upgrade? No, it's no, just it's just a, it's just a we, media group. We felt like doing a tech upgrade for Medi, and we went and just got a random sponsor because uh, <clears throat> it wasn't five thousand dollars. Uh. <laughs> I think the computer tower was five thousand dollars. Oh wow! And we did, man, we did everything. We did like monitors, um, better filming equipment, uh, better oh, wow. networking. He's got a TV. Like we we decked him out because we we're just like Medi's. Medi's a bro. Yeah, he's come out and collabed with us a couple of times. Yeah. Asks nothing in return. Absolutely nothing other than the pleasure of our company and to hang out. And make a video and, you know, get out of the office for a little bit. And, and it, like, he's just a genuine dude. Yeah. I'll and, for a long uh, time too. and so we were just like, you know, who'd be cool to just deck out Medi. Yeah. So we went for it. Um, yeah, yeah. anyway, it was a really long day though. <laughs> uh, sorry, Dan, are we supposed to be doing something? We're supposed to play games. I want to play games. Yeah. Play games. Okay. Adver games. Adver games. I'm down. Laptop HDMI. Oh, place. you want that? Uh, okay, you want? Uh, okay. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I understand. In there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, It'll work. work. It'll be fine because of this thing being stuck down. If you put it right there, it won't press any buttons. We set his daughter up with a framework laptop. Nice. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Um. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay. Wait. Am I the only one playing? Luke doesn't play. You can. Wow. 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 One sec, let me make sure that we can see it. What a dick. Yeah. <laughs> it's all his fault. I don't know who else worked on it, but it's his fault. Uh, okay. I blame on. you, Dan. It's the only few things that I get to torture you guys with. Um, <laughs> so what, Preferential treatment? <laughs> I'm not feeling tortured. <laughs> I feel good. Unless this game is terrible, and I'm the one getting f***ed. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> you never know. So, um, yeah, feel free to hit run and I will switch oh. over to your laptop. I'm already getting screwed over. This is connected via Bluetooth. He's <laughs> setting me up to fail. Oh, yeah. You know it. <laughs> All right. Oh, here we go. Oh, so, okay. So what? The challenge Pepsi is to figure invaders. out who it was? I mean, Coke probably. Wait, is that the challenge? I think so. We have, you may try to guess which brand sponsored each game. Uh, can, you even, can you even move? How am I supposed to play this? Oh, there you go. What's happening? Maybe, maybe we got whoa, this whoa, one whoa. for free. So, uh... Let's see. While the game was meant to boost morale, most employee recipients discarded their copies. <laughs> Wait. Only 125 copies were distributed, making it one of the rarest Atari 2600 games to exist. And actual copies of it have sold for $1,825 on eBay. Wow. So this was an actual Atari you cartridge. You gotta get the P. I'm, I'm getting doing? the P. You watch me get the... Oh, dang it. Watch oh. me get the PP. There we go. Those eyes look troublesome. No, those eyes are... you gonna are, get the thing? Those there? eyes are no problem. Is there a bonus for the hitting the Pepsi Probably. logo? Ooh. Coke? Coke? <laughs> what? Dang it, get it back here. Wait, what's up with that? Yeah, what, what was up with that? Dang it! 
Dang it! Get oh. over here! Oh no! You gotta wait for them to come back, you're not fast enough. Oh! One more! Dang. Can he do it? Oh. Can he do it? No! Yeah, nicely done, so nicely good. done. And then I just do it again? Yeah. Forever. You defeated For <laughs> you defeated the Coke. Good uh, good job. Does it even store your scores or anything? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Well no, it's adding to the score I got last time, so I'm getting like just a higher score harder. for the second wave. Okay, oh, do you want to try the next yeah. one? Sure, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Okay. I'll go back to the wine camp. Yeah, Linus Linus successfully shot the pee-pee. Uh okay. Uh Enjoy. sure. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> okay, so do you want to do the next one, Luke? I, I don't... Sure. I mean, I, I can do it, too. It doesn't matter. I don't think... Yeah. You know here, what? Just it's send here. It. Yep. All right. So this one we actually have to guess, because we don't actually know, I guess. This one is probably going to be a little bit more difficult, if I'm being perfectly honest. Okay. Um, so let's take... Is this something we would even know? I don't know. Uh, probably, yeah. Definitely. Oh, okay. So let's go over to Linus's laptop, and we'll get this... Going? Linora. So, this game is called Darkened Sky. Okay. Where, where did you start from? I loaded a game. Oh, you didn't just start from the top? I thought that I was supposed to probably no, load no, the game. Maybe, I don't know. I fair, would, that's what I would have thought I would well. definitely start a new game. Oh, okay. Really? Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is only six minutes in, Dan. Really? Okay, fine. Oh, okay. I can't figure out how to do anything. I have drawn my weapon. I'd start a new game. I'm not sure how to swing it. Is there a tutorial or something? You regen. Is that HP in the bottom left? You regen that really fast. Okay, so what, right, right trigger is jump. What are these controls, Dan? It's uh, it's supposed to be a GameCube controller. Uh, okay. I have never played on GameCube, so I would have no way of no- Oh. Okay, left trigger is this. Let me just see if I can get rid of your- I mean, this seems really good. Um... You know what, yeah, get out of combat for a second or something. Oh, Okay. Dead. I- I proceeded down a gentle slope and, Well, um, you were- I think you were out of HP and you got oh, shot was that the issue? at the same time. There, there you go, okay, cool. Okay, so I'm at the beginning of the game now? I think so, yeah. Oh look, I got a secret. A rune mine. A rune mine. Uh, sure. Oh, I wanted to whack him. Wow, easy sister, I'm on your side. My wow, side that voice acting, you? I love it, actually. Call me Drac, though Necroth would call me Dim Soom right about now. So, an expert on okay, Necroth, food. are we? I happen to live out near his neck of eternal chaos. I hitched a ride here with his minions. Minions! <laughs> Great, I just love minions. Oh, wow! They're Necroth special forces. They what know possibly all about your orange discovery. I'll give you a hint oh, after no, the no, cutscene. No, 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 you don't want a hint, okay. Hood, why would you want to help the hood, me? I love it. Let's just say he whose face may not be glimpsed and I have issues. Want my help, yay or nay? Thinking of going with yay. Okay. Yeah, that didn't really seem like that convincing a sales pitch to me. I have a feeling Necroth is supposed to be like the big giveaway. I have no idea. What the heck? Why was I swinging around so much when they weren't there? And that. What is this move? Okay, I think double tapping is a heavy attack? You know what? I'm sorry, Dan, but I just have no idea what's going on right now. I would, uh, okay, well, another cutscene, hold on. old woman named Ganish. She can tell you about that orange thing of yours that has everyone's woolies in a bunch. Oh, that's right, the orange thing. Orange thing. Oh! The rune of power! Oh! It's a power rune, it's a magical rock. It's a skittle. It's a skittle. <laughs> what kind of subliminal nonsense did they think they were doing here? So is that as explicit as it gets, or is it like... Now, that I'm not entirely sure about. Um, it's Skittles? It's, it's technically... Well, we've got some fun facts here. It's technically not an adventure game, or sorry, adver game, because the brand didn't pay Simon and uh, Schuster. Simon & Schuster paid a royalty on sales to use the brand. So they, Why? they, they paid, paid to have Skittles as their runes of power, it seems like? I didn't know that. That's absolutely messed up. 
What? Oh. Sky is voiced by Linda Larkin, best known as the voice of Princess Jasmine in Disney's Aladdin. Wow. So this had at least some kind of a budget. I uh, mean, it's yeah. not what's evident from what's happening right now. A young girl named Sky finds one of five brightly colored magical stones, then embarks on a quest to collect all the stones, searching for her missing mother and defeating the evil wizard Necroth. Why are they Skittles? The game features a magic system based on the stones, with different combinations of colors creating different spells. The rainbow-themed magic stones are, in fact, the branded product. Okay, well, I think that's um, probably enough of that. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I'll go back to you guys there. I just don't understand. T -t Luke's face is phenomenal. Okay, <laughs> and the last one I've got for you, you both actually get to play. Yay! Cool. I think Luke sounds very excited. <clears throat> well, yeah, we've seen the quality of gameplay so far. Uh, I need a different Xbox controller. I'm assuming this is connected to something what else. What about second Xbox controller? <laughs> Why is this one not gold? Second game. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one too. Luke <laughs> <laughs> wants some runes of power. I actually don't. I'm, I'm good with no runes of power. Oh, okay, let's see. How do we do this? Uh, what if the rooms of power are this one. candy cane themed handcuffs. <laughs> should, no, no, no. should try and, and play it with those on. I'll do it. <laughs> I knew, yeah. Oh, he's going to do it, you isn't he? You must have known that was going to happen. No. The second you said that, one of us was going to end up wearing no. these. I'm oh, still man. not used to that. <laughs> what? What I've been doing this for so long and I, I still forget the power of making comments like that. <laughs> I'm a little confused by this. Um... Okay, this warning makes a lot of sense to me. <clears throat> For adult novelty use only, mm -hmm. warning, please discontinue if there is any discomfort for you or your partners. Mm -hmm. Age is 14 plus. <laughs> Wait, was partners pluralized? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Age is 14 plus. Um, yeah, more than that, please. Yeah. Hmm. Wow, these really are the exact same handcuffs that you could get at the dollar store when I was a child, mm. but with fuzz on them. Cheap fuzz on them, and probably for like fifteen dollars. Yeah, Instead fifteen bucks exactly. Dollar. Yeah. Why do you know how much these cost? <laughs> Why do you know the price of novelty handcuffs? By the way, these are as small as the kid ones too. They like barely fit even on me. Oh wow! Check mine. Let's see. I I was able to do two clicks on mine without it being quite uncomfortable. I wonder if you can do any. Oh, oh, just send it. Hold on, is it, is it in the hole? <laughs> no, no, it's not. Yeah, it won't, it won't close on him. Oh, wait, it's not in the hole? Oh, yeah, okay. there you go. You gotta spit on it. <laughs> no, you can't, you can't squeeze. I know, I was just messing with you. Yeah, oh. I, no, I can't click it. Yeah. I, I almost got it, it was very close. Yeah. I mean, yeah, my wrists are not huge, and I can only do... Ow, four really hurts. I can do too comfortably okay let's get these on and uh prepare to play a game cool. they're already falling apart <laughs> these seem to be single use mm. items ouch i mean realistically what were you gonna do wash them <laughs> <laughs> okay anyway uh all right let's uh so let's go here yeah you're gonna play there there okay. you go what uh, the I think is that me on the left? Yeah, dude, you're booking it. <laughs> You've been booking it for the last three hours. Uh, I guess. Wow. I guess push start. Uh, uh, sure. yeah, yeah, Linus, I think is is okay. There you go. You USA say one, one safety, safety first. first. Is this gonna like, run an obstacle course? Yeah. Is this like American Ninja War? Yeah, exactly. Boom. Ba 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 ba. Da, 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 da. Oh, I see. I don't a hundred percent understand exactly what we're supposed How does to be this doing. Part work? You got to get to the end as fast as you can. So this was a party game developed by uh, developed for the Xbox 360 and released for free on can the double Xbox. Double jump or like? I think so. Uh, you can also hold the left trigger to sprint too. Oh. I think. Oh well, man. Oh, that I didn't know about that. Friggin' helped. Yeah. Uh, okay, so basically, jumping uh, is good. 
I mean, I'm so far behind Luke that, like... I really? I feel like I'm not doing well. There's tutorials in the background sometimes. Yeah, I just didn't... Oh, wow, I fell into the water. Oh, my goodness. This is... This is getting worse, not better. Um... Okay. Uh, How long are these courses, though? Okay. Like, I just... I, uh... I am so far behind you, dude. <laughs> I was stuck on one of the jumps for a very long time because I didn't know how to run. Yeah, the the run helps a lot. It do. All right. So yeah, this is an American Ninja Warrior game. Basically, it's inspired by that type of thing. But the hold game on, hold was. On, hold on, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to. I want to see if I can guess who actually paid for it, though. Oh yeah. I mean, I can continue. Uh, sure. I can continue giving some explanations. But okay. Next level. Yeah, if you want. Here you, we go. you can have a guess. Do you want to have a guess? Uh, Mine is American Ninja Warrior. Uh, oh, I got it. I got it. You got it? Oh, yeah. Are those I not American it. flags? What are those flags? It's Doritos. Doritos? We both uh, wow, got Wow, that was awesome. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too, sure. Uh, I mean, both uh, of them were doing the exact uh, same thing, Luke, so it's not really much of an excuse. So how'd you know it was fair. Doritos? Doritos is correct. How did you know it was Doritos? Uh, there was a tiny Doritos ad in the, in the background. Oh, oh. that's gross. I didn't even see that. Yeah, it was like very small, like a little, little pop-up Doritos thing, and then it went away. Yeah, that's this is weird. This is a weird. No, 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 no! There we go. They seem to sponsor a bunch of different types of ad for games. Really? Sub sub what? I didn't get hit by it. Is that something that's happened recently, or like? I have absolutely no idea. Is this a subliminal rope? Doritos? Oh, this is a rope. Yeah. No, I don't need the rope. Okay, uh -oh. forget it. Uh, ooh. I'm definitely losing this time. Uh, I- I'm probably not as far ahead as you might think, or at all. Whoa, oh, I just got creamed! How did, I, how did I just do a cartwheel? Got friggin' creamed, boys! There was cream involved. Oh, I don't know if you want to say that while we're wearing- you're wearing those, sorry. I mean... It's not like they'd believe me if I said there wasn't. <laughs> Okay, so does the rope do something? Oh, uh, like... yeah, sometimes my, like, controller shakes, and I have no idea why, and bad things happen. Uh, I'm not at the bottom of the rope enough. Am I sprinting for too long? I feel like real... I think you might be sprinting for too long. American Ninja Warriors would sprint the whole time, so I don't know how real that Woo! is. Yeah, did you win already? I guess. I thought you yeah. were ahead of me. No, man. I, I am not very good at games or this. Whee! You're better than you say. I mean, yeah, you win sure. win often. Woo! I like the pose that my person chose to do. I like that they no! put their, their fist on their hip, but there's a gap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you did it. Look, wow. look, there's a gap. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's good. Quality. My guy's really happy for someone who came in last. Yeah, Doritos. Okay, so here. Uh, here's where I saw it. On my screen, it pops up right as we start the next level. Let's see. Yeah, there it is. Very, very top left. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty small and kind of like out of the way for- Time uh, to win because Luke wasn't ready! <laughs> yeah, boys! Yeah, boys! What the? Oh, I didn't grab the rope! Woo! I'm screwed. Oh, it's over. Nah, man. I just fell like 300 feet to my doom. So yeah, I, I didn't down, to down to slide. Down to slide. Down to slide. I'm down to slide. Oh! Buddy! Game! Oh man, it moves you back really far in this level. Ugh. Oh, I missed! <laughs> Does it- oh, is that little helicopter thing the other player? Yeah, that's- that's Luke. Yeah, that's what- oh, what the- I really- Oh, oh dang! Oh, he broke a nose. Oh boy. Those hammer things- I mean, that time I definitely got hit by it, but... <laughs> I often feel like I'm not- I shouldn't get hit by it, but I do. It kind of feels like oh. a, a bit of a... <laughs> we both just went off at the same time. It kind of feels a little random, like the speed that you have to go through them at, and the, um... The differences in timing and stuff are just... I don't know, man. What the heck is going on here? Oh, oh okay. Oh, there's like the fast path of above, and I didn't realize that. Yeah... What? What? Uh, I can't neither. even see... Oh, there's a projectile. My eyes are too bad, I can't... Uh -oh. Advantage Linus. Uh, he, he will not be able to take advantage of it. Uh-oh. I see what I was supposed to do. 
Woo! You're supposed to. Oh, are you supposed to? Yeah, you're supposed to slide. I think I get it. Uh, Woo! What is this? How does this work? Oh boy! Um. Wow. What just happened? What just happened? Oh, you can't slide when it's going that way. That makes sense. Oh get yeah, wrecked. please! No! <laughs> All right. Ooh. Oh! Oh! Ooh. Oh! Oh, terrible. Oh. All right, I'm done. All right. GG. And this came off. Oh. <laughs> You're just too strong, dude. I'm putting it back on. <laughs> this actually seems kind of fun. <laughs> well, not that. <laughs> the Doritos game. The Doritos game. game? It was all right. Yeah. Yeah. Darkened Sky, depending on when that was released. I don't know. Um, no, it potential. was pretty bad. The, no, it was pretty. It was pretty clunky. But it was. You were supposed to be on like GameCube controllers, and those are very different. It looks a lot newer than. Um, um, oh, it Soul, was two thousand two. Soul Reaver Legacy of Cain, and the controls of that are a lot better than Darkened Sky. It also came out on PC as well, I believe. So did Soul Reaver Legacy of Cain. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. No. No, man. I've not played it. Sorry. All right. What are we supposed to be talking about now? Um, we could do this week in AI. Yeah, that's up to you. Uh, do we? Are there any other main do topics, we? though? Oh, we did the AMD overclocking thing. Should we talk about that? Or yeah. we didn't do, rather? Yeah. On Monday, Chinese Twitter user David Huang <laughs> posted a warning that popped up when he was enabling <laughs> overclocking on his Ryzen 7000 CPU, which stated, overclocking mode will now be permanently enabled for this processor, effectively voiding warranty as previously stated. Wow, that's pretty brutal. In response to user concern, AMD published a reaffirmation that overclocking does not void a CPU's warranties. Enabling overclocking does, however, blow a hidden fuse to indicate that overclocking has been used at some point in the chip's history, and overclocking damage itself is not covered. However, an overclocked chip is still covered by warranty or repair for other unrelated issues. Okay. Okay, then. So basically, we'll do it, but only if we say that the damage yeah. was not caused by overclocking, which realistically, I can tell you, having seen the kind of equipment that these brands use to determine... Like a, a low level error in these chips, they are not pulling that out for every single stupid RMA. It's a dead chip. That's that 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 that's it. Um, so basically, the only reason for this fuse to exist is an easy flag. Is if they will. It's it's like it's like putting moisture sensors in your phone. Yeah, and then saying. But it's fine if you get liquid in it. We will honor your warranty. Um, I mean, to be clear, I don't think AMD has given us any indication yet that they intend to do anything with this flag, with this fuse that can be blown. But the fact that they have it at all indicates that they felt they needed it. And the fact that they felt they needed it seems to indicate that they might feel they would need to use it at some point. And I just, I have a hard time imagining how they could tell the difference between a clock that, a clock, a chip that failed prematurely because it was overclocked or a chip that failed prematurely because it just failed prematurely. The flag would not change anything about that other than to tell them that you overclocked it, at which point they could say at their discretion, it failed prematurely because you overclocked it. Um... Yeah. It's a little sketch. Definitely a little sketch. El Eraldo says, I think it's fair. It tells them to look for signs of overcurrent or overvoltage damage. And if they find it, they could void your warranty. But again, I got to tell you, they are not doing that level of analysis on your like $400 CPU. To you, that's a lot of money. To a company like AMD, it is not. It is, it is actually not worth the time to take a technician and do a, a, a micro level analysis, like nano level analysis on this chip and determine 
if you overclocked it or not. Because, yeah, if, if, if there, there could be some visually very obvious versions of that, but there's also a bunch of not. Yeah. Also, I, I, I want to mention about Crash Course. A bunch of people are saying that, like, it was actually a big thing for, like, them and their friends growing up. That was decently fun. Yeah. I, I, it seemed pretty fun to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We weren't trying to dog that. I think we were more commenting on the other ones because they were, like... It's four-player as well. So four-player couch co-op. That's pretty sick. That's pretty good. That yeah. would have gotten some use if I had that when I was younger, for sure. No doubt. Fu the, the demo of Fusion Frenzy <laughs> got busted out of my house, like, all the time. So, yeah, that definitely would have gotten some use. The sliding actually added a surprising amount to the fun. Um, but, yeah. Anyway, should we move on from that? It's an important topic to bring up, but I don't think there's a ton of discussion. E3 is officially dead. Yeah. Was that the one? No, actually. Okay, well, it's dead, um, which is sort of um, was a surprise to me because I didn't realize it was still alive. I thought it was dead already. I, yeah. I don't know why I thought that, but I definitely did. Yeah. I, I just, I, I, I thought it was just already settled that EA, EA, excuse me, E3 was not a thing anymore. Yeah. So cool. Hasn't taken place since 2019. It was canceled entirely in 2020, 2022, and 2023. Um, uh, how, what possible expo could continue to survive after not being an expo for um, three years? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, um, RIP E3, I guess, I guess the Game Awards now is where everyone does that stuff or their own events. I think that. Yeah. Online announcements, stuff like that. Yeah. Honestly, I'm pretty supportive of online announcements. Yeah. Why exactly is it that Nintendo we Nintendo Directs are great. Why do we burn like like tons upon tons of jet fuel to bring people to look at a pres like PowerPoint? <laughs> like I I'm sorry. I just I can't fathom it. I don't understand it. Yeah. Yeah. Nintendo Directs, seriously. I I wish more companies did Nintendo Direct style things. Because they're awesome. Anyways. Um, should we talk about uh, Ubiquity? Yeah. Ubiquity customers trade security cameras. Starting early Wednesday, users of Ubiquity networking devices have been reporting that they can see and receive notifications from other users' devices through Ubiquity's Unify Cloud Portal. This was flagged by a Reddit user whose wife received a notification from a uh, Unify Protect alongside a picture from someone else's security camera. Another user logged into the Unify site manager and found 88 devices, that's a lot, uh, that did not belong to them. Yet another user logged in and found that they had full access to someone else's UDM Pro. Once the users refreshed the portal page, they were shown only the devices associated with their own accounts. Following investigation, Ubiquity has issued a statement saying that this bug was caused by a misconfiguration in an upgrade to the Unify cloud infrastructure. According to Ubiquity, only 12 accounts were inappropriately accessed and affected users will be contacted. The problem has been fixed, but is still under investigation again. That is uh, Ubiquity's statement. Um, this is bad. Yeah. Discussion question. How big is the risk of our security devices getting compromised and used against us? Why do we use them anyways? Um, the risk is big. They're a huge target. Um, yeah. And we've talked a ton of times on the show about how you should never really consider um, anything that goes on the internet. 100% be bulletproof. Yep. Yeah. Like it. Uh, you can try to do whatever you can to resist against it, but if it goes onto the internet, there's a way that other people can get it. Realistically, someone's probably seen my ding dong at some point. Dennis. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, well, I mean, aside from Dennis. <laughs> In other news, Google stops snitching. What? Google is changing how it handles no data from the Maps app, so the company will no longer have access to users' individual <laughs> location histories. That means Google will no longer be able to answer geofence warrants. So these are warrants that compel the company to disclose the information of anyone who was in the approximate location of a crime at the rough time that it was committed. 
Nearly all geofence warrants in the U.S. are addressed to Google, and they represent 25% of the warrants Google gets every year. We have some discussion questions here, but I actually have a different discussion question that I want to talk about. Do you think that this has anything to do with protecting their users? Or do you think, hold on, can you just let me finish the question? Jeez. Or do you think that it has more to do with Google just not wanting to do the administrative paperwork of responding to these warrants? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Because there's no way it's simple. There's like, there's no way. Yeah. It's legal. Yeah. It Anytime doesn't generate you revenue. Touch legal stuff. It's annoying as heck. Uh, and then, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely not generating revenue. Um, wow. My uh, nose plug there. My voice got all weird, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not surprised at all. This is probably a good thing because companies just collecting insane amounts of data about us is like not great. So the fact that it's happening, less the right thing for cool. probably the wrong reasons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because if they were, if they were into the whole user privacy thing, they wouldn't have done this in the first place. Yeah. So they never were. Yeah. Um, and there's definitely no way they're not now. Can I just take a moment to say, can you imagine committing a crime with your phone on you? <laughs> I mean, obviously, you know, here's the moment like stuff happens one, or right? whatever, but like, like, yo. Leave that at home. <laughs> <laughs> like, leave what it. What were they doing? I don't know. Play music, put on table, leave. Oh, know, he's listening to music. Yeah. Like, Man, <laughs> it seems like the lowest level, like most obvious things. But you know, yeah, there's the whole criminals are dumb thing. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I mean, the smart criminals probably are doing pretty good for themselves. Like anything, right? There, there's the there's the cream, and then there's the crud. Um, but yeah, yeah, just some some advice free of charge. I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> If you're going to crime, <laughs> leave the phone or you'll do the time, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, the day before launches, then the day after departs. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. This one. I, uh, other than, other than this game being, um, just sort of a disaster. I, I don't really know anything about this. Did you try the game? Like, no. I hadn't even heard about this until... I thought it was the game that, like, Goat had exposed, um, because uh, we, we've talked about Goat Moth a few times on the show around, like, Tarkov stuff, but he started doing, like, video game journalism stuff after that. And he did something on a, on a, a military game that sounded somewhat similar that was a huge scam. So I assumed this was that, but it's not. It's apparently some other one. Oh, okay. And now it's gone already? Like, this whole thing happened so fast. I didn't even have time to, like, notice that it happened. I All I saw was, was news about how it got taken off the store and the company disappeared. Yeah. Nothing else. And, like, it, uh, th the stuff that I read was, like, that they were planning on giving everyone refunds, even if they're above the two-hour threshold, and that they were, like, closing their company down. So I was like, okay, this sounds like the story's very over. But people keep. The work. I mean, we're talking about it right now. Yeah. So. Well, that know. was it. Yeah. Cool. Um, bye. Rancho After Dark. Yeah. No, you can't say bye. Then I have to end the show. Oh, I meant bye. Way to, to go, Luke. I'm hitting the button. <laughs> yeah, Luke has <laughs> ended the show. <laughs> I meant bye to like the. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh, that's actually really difficult to fix. <laughs> what? No, I hit the button. Uh, if I hit the button, it's different. That right? wasn't the merch message. Okay, one. we'll see if the, yeah. how the timing works. I know. I know. But. Oh. Uh oh. It doesn't matter. Did I break something? Does that button so. actually send the dashboard? I don't think so. It's uh Did you make it do that? I don't know. If you see letters appear, that'll be kind of interesting. <laughs> letters appear? Oh. oh. Letters? Yeah, the uh, sponsors. Appear. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, the sponsors uh, just like might show up at some point. Okay. Well, that's cool. They'll be the after dark sponsors. Yeah. I uh, it looks okay. I, th I think it should have shown up by now, Dan. Yeah, they will definitely come and go. They'll come. They will definitely come and go. Yeah, if they're going to come at all. Oh, I see. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Because it's all an automated timing thing. All right, hit me, Dan. Oh, let me sit down. Jeez. Okay, let's see. Uh, what's a good way to convince a loved one to let me set them up with a server to keep their over five hundred thousand photos. Uh, instead of keeping them on their desk on top of 20-ish flash drives. Don't.
because now it'll be your responsibility when the, ultimately someone who has extremely poor data hygiene loses something. They obviously aren't willing to put in the work and you can't save people from themselves. And realistically in a hundred years, you'll both be dead and none of those pictures will matter. So don't worry about it. Sorry. Little dose of Wancho after really dark. Yeah. Jeez. Are the Tooks coming back at some point? <laughs> Dan's like, let's get out of this one. <laughs> oh boy. I'm saving Luke from this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Don't think about it. <laughs> The void. How about some toques? <laughs> <laughs> it's cold in the void. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Do you want your head to be warmer when you're in the void? <laughs> Sorry, why are we talking about toques? Is that a merch message? Yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. is actually a merch message. <laughs> There's toques on the store right now, aren't there? So then, yes, they're back immediately. Uh, nice. <laughs> What? Are they not? I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know either. It's hard to type like this. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure it out. No, I got this. Uh, okay. Uh, are they clothing? Are they hats? Are they, are they gear? gear? Is gear hats? One of these days. I we'll don't think there's a category out. for them. Accessories? Is it a top? A beanie? It's a beanie. That's, That's an accessory, it. apparently. That's a toque. They say sold out. Notify me when available. Oh, wow. We did, Oh, we bonus binned away a lot of these. Um, Every single color. Oh, okay. I don't know. Uh, Linus, uh, you got to replug that HDMI cord, I think. Oh, well, there's your problem right there. Yeah, every single one. Notify me when available. Okay, well, uh, I don't know, because they. this is an item that wasn't selling particularly well, and we took an absolute bath on during Black Friday, Cyber Monday to clear them out. Uh, I... I did talk to Nick about how next time around we might want to, for things that are selling a little bit, but slowly, we might want to just not blow away every single unit, but hold on to like a couple hundred so that we have stock for a little bit and people can still buy them if they feel like it. Uh, but that's not how that went down. We blew away every single one. And so <laughs> now they're gone. And whether we bring them back in or not really depends. Um, we, maybe on a color by color basis, we'd look at the ones that were moving pretty mm. well still, but there was a lot of colors. Yeah, I, I think that if we bring back toques, maybe we'll kind of reinvigorate them a little bit somehow because I feel like they moved really well out for a long time. And then I think, I don't know, maybe just all of you have toques now. I'm not sure. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Okay, let's swing the other way again. Uh, with the discussion of minors on the internet and explicit content on websites like Twitch ah, and Twitter, how of... much of this would be mitigated if parents properly monitored what their kids watched online? Oh. Well, here's another question. How much of the trouble in the world would be mitigated if God was watching and did something about it? I guess what I'm trying to say is... <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Human's gonna human. Just, just end after dark now. <laughs> the cuffs have unlocked something. <laughs> He's become too powerful. <laughs> what if nothing in the universe mattered? <laughs> Be nice to each other. You think I'm restrained? <laughs> I've never been more free. <laughs> I just mean people are people are gonna people, right? And kids are just little people and there is no such thing as perfect parental supervision. And if there was perfect parental supervision, um, I think that you would be potentially stunting your kids. I mean, uh, one of our kids is probably too honest. And so we've had to start having conversations that go, hey, um, sometimes, it is actually a very valuable life skill to be able to hold your cards a little bit closer to your chest. And we're not telling you to lie, cheat, and steal. What we're telling you is that... Um, Things take tact. Yeah, sometimes just the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth is not the best way to handle a situation for everyone involved. Um, and... Having a little bit of discretion can actually be valuable. So I, uh, yeah, I, I don't think that the right approach is to completely protect kids from anything that could be harmful to them necessarily. So I, yeah, I just, I, I don't know if I agree with the question. 
Um, I, I, uh, I also don't, I also don't disagree with the overall premise that parents should take some responsibility for what their kids are exposed to. And, and part of taking responsibility is not necessarily, you know, putting up a perfect barrier that prevents anything bad from happening or any bad exposure, but talking to them and dealing with it. And, you know, that's the ideal situation in my mind is things happen and life happens and life's complicated and people are, people are messy, right? But you, you work through it and, and you deal with it. Are any more Lux items coming? Keep them coming. Would uh, love a matching sling or duffel bag. I think we're going to see how the Lux backpack does. Uh, Pre-sales are okay. And once it's actually in stock and shipping, I do think sales will pick up. Uh, if we hit a certain threshold, then yeah, I think you'll see more Lux items from us. It's a really cool material, this Apple leather. I was blown away by how good it is. Uh, but I think that this is one of those things where just because I say it doesn't mean you should believe everything I say, right? I, I've told you guys so many times in the past, you got to consider everyone's motivation, right? What's in it for them? Obviously, what's in it for me is you buying a $600 backpack. So sure, you know, you could trust me, but verify. And I think the way to verify is to wait for those, those early orderers to give their independent opinions. And then if it's the kind of product you would consider, go for it. Yeah. And, you know, once we, once we see some momentum there, yeah, I could see us developing more. I think it's a great material, but we need to see uh, a willingness from the audience to... to engage with our brand in that way. It's a premium product. It does cost us a lot more in materials and workmanship to make than the regular bag. That's why, that's why the price is a lot higher. Um, but just because something costs more doesn't mean that people are willing to, doesn't mean people have the perception of that brand that they should have the right to have a product that costs that much more. Uh, you know, maybe if they, if you have $600 to spend on a backpack, you'd rather buy from like an established, you know, luxury brand or fashion brand or whatever else it is. And that's totally your prerogative, right? So we just need to see if, um, if that's something that we can build towards, if we can build these luxury goods, these um, very, very high end products. And it's going to be a bit of a journey or it'll be over. You know, we're open-minded. <laughs> that was pretty good. Small clap. I love it. The margin percentage is about the same to the person who asked. Can we please have an update on the screwdriver holster? I work in maintenance for over 80 apartments and 30 villas, and I carry the screwdriver with me every day. Um, no. We got nothing right now. But we have pants. Um, this is going to be really hard. My headphone goes through here, and I need to reach my backpack. I can... Uh, hmm. <laughs> this is a lot harder to maneuver with than I anticipated. Do you want me to take your headphones off for you? Um, you'd think with all my practice, I'd be able to... <laughs> that tracks. Just handling different objects in those scenarios. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you're working something with both hands, it doesn't matter that you can't separate them, you know? Yeah. Oh, my God. I already had a screwdriver in my scooper. <laughs> anyway, the point is, um, our cargo pants... Uh, they have a screwdriver ...are going to have a screwdriver pocket. Oh, it goes point down. Yes. Because otherwise the point will, uh, the, the one on this sample is too small. Uh, we're still working on that. But if you have it point up, but the when pocket's in the right place for it to be ergonomic, then it'll stab you in the stomach if you have a bit of a gut. Um, so we, we want, we're, we're, we're aiming point down and so it'll be there and it'll mm. kind of stick up and you'll, whoop, you'll pull it out like that. Yeah. Anyway, it's in the, it's in the larger cargo pocket for me right now because this sample of the pants, it doesn't uh, go in properly. Mm. Yeah, our, our cargo pants are going to be awesome. Do -do, I, dear LDL, what LTD product did you think would be great until the last minute where it turned out to be a horrible idea? Also, can't wait for the shaft. Mine is stubby. A horrible idea. Um, horrible. Horrible's a big word. Yeah. 
I curated this one. I think you could interpret it as like, didn't end up doing as well as you thought. Maybe not horrible. Oh, um, this is one that I was personally kind of opposed to, but we did anyway. The, uh, the meme face desk pads were kind of a disaster. Uh, they, they didn't sell particularly well. I think we gave away as many as we how did, sold. How did the sequin pillows do? Not very well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We kind of, we kind of pivoted away from meme products and into what we think we're really good at, which is serious products that are just really Your good. Phone cables, taking it off slowly. Just so you know. Oh. There we go. There Thanks. Go. No, no problem. Serious company. <laughs> So if, if they fall off, then you become indecent and we can't have that. That's what, then, yeah. then the show ends. That's important. Luke is protecting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I've got distracted by Linus's, um, uh, sorry. Uh, good morning, Dan, <laughs> Linus and Luke. Are there any things that you haven't done or made because you believed that your significant other disapproved of it, but they actually never said anything about it? Oh, wow. Interesting. Uh, Yvonne and I, are very open with each other. <laughs> we are like mind meld at this point. We've been together 18 years. We've done absolutely everything together. Yeah, we've been we've been together more than we've not been together in our lives, uh, including like infancy. So um, to say that we barely even remember life without each other would be true um, in both cases. I, um, whew. I watch movies and TV shows, you know, where the entire the entire premise of of the conflict of the story could have been resolved by just being honest with your spouse about that you lost your job or you know whatever and I just kind of I kind of have a really hard time watching because even though I know that these so are yelling at the TV. Yeah. Sure, he's all back. Yeah, just if you, yeah. if you if you felt that way just say something because this could be resolved in like four minutes you know everyone has a good cry and then you resolve to do better going forward like i just i um i can't i don't get it yeah yeah viscous cree this was the whole plot of aladdin 100 percent. like it's it's real hard for me to watch and the funny thing is we all grow up with these stories and we all see how problematic it is and we all do it um, and, and to, and to be honest with you, like outside of my relationship with Yvonne, yeah, I withhold things that probably cause problems and, and then it causes problems. Like we're again, humans, we're messy. Right. Yeah. Um, but with Yvonne, no, I actually, I can't say that I can think of a time that that's happened. Maybe she could, she's, she's always better at remembering things I've done wrong. <laughs> uh, are you, uh, are you going to ask her now? Yeah, I was thinking. I'm okay. Here. Hey. hey lady you're on the wan show oh hey what's up which um, means you're on speaker I, yeah i mean the last I seem, person found that confusing and it's a live broadcast seemed pretty self-explanatory to me but okay yeah um question for you oh the merch message yep. is gone um crap uh, uh, uh what oh. is something that you didn't do uh that you and, oh, right, it would have right, been right, okay right. but can you think of something that i didn't do because i thought you wouldn't like it but then it turned out like you never said anything about it and you didn't care. Oh man. Um, like a, like a miscommunication or like a misunderstanding. Like somewhere I was like, Oh, I, I'm not going to do that because like Yvonne wouldn't like it, but actually you didn't care and you never said anything about it. Oh, well, there was one the other day in the staff meeting where you said you chose family instead of cooperation. And I was like, Oh, I don't care about that. Oh, okay. I mean, I was, I was also just like mostly joking with you about that, but okay. Can you think of anything like bigger? We did these, hold on, hold on one sec. We did these like personality assessment things with the executive team and we had to choose like three things we valued most and compared to cooperation, I chose family, which had a very similar description. It was like valuing relationships, something, something, something. And, um, I basically was like, yeah, I, I picked family over that one because they're kind of synonymous, but I, I figured you'd kill me if I didn't pick family. I was, I was mostly just joking with her. Um, okay. Anything else? Um, hmm. Are you talking about like in our 
relationship or sure, family anything. life or like I mean, anything? It's, it's Wancho after dark. There's nothing's off limits, I guess. <laughs> Man. I'm in handcuffs yeah, right now. All... Fuzzy Sorry? ones. I said I'm in fuzzy I'm... handcuffs right now. And he's wearing pasties. <laughs> That's not an expression. That's literal. Yeah. I can't really hear Luke. Uh, <laughs> and he's wearing pasties. I don't think she knows what pasties are. Uh, what are pasties? It's okay. Don't worry about it, honey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're a wonderful person. I love you very much. Um, no, what I was going to say was after the call, I'm probably going to think of all kinds of things, but I can't think of anything right now. All right. Cool. Perfect. That works for me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, love. Okay. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Dude, I I can tell with like ninety five percent accuracy when Yvonne is not going to know a word because almost anything related to that, I'm the one who explained it to her. <laughs> so if I didn't explain it to her, she doesn't know about it. Oh man, she's so wholesome. <laughs> oh boy. Oh. Okay. Sheesh. Um, did you guess all of mine when we were doing that exercise? While I was picking them, I was like, I feel like I should throw in some curveball so that Linus doesn't just automatically guess um, everything I picked. I knew you were going to have something about determination, obviously. The, the only thing that I thought might throw you off is like, uh, about, like... Every three things were the same as the third previous. Like, yeah, there like, were a lot of kind of synonymous things. When I say cooperation and family were the same, it's because like the description of them was kind of similar because this was in like a work context. So family was like, like building each other up and cooperation was working together towards a common goal. Then there's also like teamwork. Yeah, exactly. And, and like, yeah, there was yeah. only actually really like 10 selections. Yeah. But there was like 50 things So I knew you were going to have something about just like getting her done. Yeah. Um, I knew you were going to have something about like loyalty. Yeah. Um, I don't remember which version of that I chose. Yeah. But again, there was like five of them. And then the thing I already said, which I forget what it was. Um, Whatever. Yeah. So you basically, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, like we've, we've been married almost as long as Yvonne and I have. So... <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I guessed yours and I even guessed how you would like sassily present them, <laughs> which was, which was very satisfying while I was like sitting there listening. I was like, yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's nice to see you guys can still keep it interesting, you know, in the yeah. business room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I've got one for Luke here. If Linus, you want to have a look through some of the potentials, it's up to you. Hey, DLL, oh this one is God. for Luke. Hold on, hold uh -oh. on. Oh, I have God. to read this out. Oh, no. Um, Ariel, our co-op student, oh, boy. just posted in the float plane chat. Yeah, not going to bed angry has been a rule in our relationship for at least four years. And a few months ago, my girlfriend asked me where I got it from. Had to tell her it was from Linus, which made us both laugh. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. <sighs> Ariel, you're a gem. That's um, pretty good. Okay, Dan, hit me. Uh, this one's for Luke. You don't get hit. You can <laughs> read the potentials. Hey, DLL, this one's for Luke. With a company's aggressively copywriting code, algorithms, and numbers, will teachers eventually be unable to teach certain concepts or problems due to copyright? Well, sorry, this is for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they'll have a problem with it. Um, go for it. No, no, I do want it. you to do it. We can do it collaboratively. No, I want you to do we it. We can do I, this one together. I just know you're going to have a different angle than me, so you should just go first, and then it'll be fine, because I can just say my, my part. Uh, I, I don't think a cop copyright is that big of a deal in schools, um, and I think schools should be focusing on teaching, you know, skills. Like, we, we didn't just become unable to teach math because of calculators, that whole conversation, so I, I think it'll be fine. There okay. are already teachers that are adapting. He touched on it. Fair use. Yeah. Um, the, the, the nature of the use matters a lot and you yeah. can get away with a lot if it's for the purposes of educating the people about it. The second you throw it. education on there. Yeah. Uh, not only is it generally okay, but also most companies are just okay with it at that yeah, point. Yeah, you just, because remember, there's a big difference between what's legally allowed and what a company is likely to pursue yeah. litigation for. Like, technically, you could make the argument that particularly in a sponsored piece of content, which is commercial content um us 
uh, putting up a video. Okay, let's say it was a sponsored piece of content on a great monitor or TV. And we were to put up Disney's Encanto on the screen. You could make the argument that that's not editorial, which would be far more protected, like educational use. You could make the argument that it's more commercial because we are making this video for the purpose of... Um, of educating about the display, sure, but through the lens of a manufacturer-sponsored piece of content. However, the context in which we're using the content is obviously positive about the... Con Why on earth did we have it on the screen? Because Disney's not the one who gave us any money. It's the display manufacturer who did. And so the context of us having this content on the screen is that we think it's a great piece of content for showing off a great display and is, is, makes everything look beautiful. Why would Disney pursue a lawsuit against me yeah. for saying, wow, this movie is so great that it is the thing that makes sense for us to put on the most beautiful of displays that we are trying to make look as beautiful as possible? So, yeah, from a legal standpoint, if they decided that they had a gigantic rod up their butt and they wanted to go after us, sure, they might be able to do that. It would be costly. It would be an inordinate waste of time. And at the end of the day, all we were doing was presenting their content in a positive light and coming to one of the other pillars of fair use, the impact on the market for the original work, increasing the market for the original work by showing off the content. Like, it's just, it's silliness. It's a bit of a gray area because of that whole impact and how you have to fair use as a defense and blah, 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 and all this stuff. But just, why? It's also going to look horrible just if some why? company goes after, like, a school. And Nintendo doesn't care about that sort of thing, but most do. And there is a degree of common sense in the law. Common sense would dictate that if in a non-negative way... Somebody is using your copyrighted content in a way that has no impact on the enjoyment of the original paid work. Um, it's probably better to just ignore it. Um, so, so honestly, we we have we have used copyrighted content to show off displays extensively in editorial content and sponsored content. And my attitude towards it has been, I mean, realistically, what we just have a war chest. If somebody ever decides that they are stupid enough to go after us for it, then we either fight it or we settle or we do whatever. But at the end of the day, what do people care about when they're buying a TV, when they're buying a monitor? They care about what their con what, what beautiful, great content is going to look like on it. And that's going to be whatever the latest games and movies are. So that's what we're just going to put on them and we'll figure it out if it's ever a problem. A-L-L-D. Linus, after doing LMG for over 15 years, what would your answer to Linus, who are you? What would your answer be? What would your answer be? I mean, yeah, all I have to do is go to my <clears throat> Twitter profile. Here we go. I'm a privateer, father of children, maker of YouTube videos, player of badminton, Canadian. Yes, I play Forged Alliance forever. <laughs> Husband in there, probably somewhere. Otherwise, Sorry. my wife will kill me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I am joking about. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. That's a bit of a cop out answer. Um, oh, you already you, you marked it. You marked it resolved. Okay. Well, apparently, it's a good answer. Yeah. Ticket closed. <laughs> I have metrics to maintain, sir. <laughs> Next. Tall shirts when? Ah, tall shirts when? Ah. I don't know. It's all in capitals. I'm uh, archiving it. Answer the question. Oh. I don't I don't know. We're we're Please. I want to prioritize Okay, so here's the problem. Please. Please, here's the problem. Every color, every size. I just skew. want one. It's just yeah, just one. Just I just one want shirt. a black okay, well, black shirt. Just one shirt. Okay, I'll tell you what. Would you guys be happy if we started with black? Yeah. That's all I wear. And, and potato sack. <laughs> um, I love this my story. life like changed when I All right. realized there was shirts that were made for. Okay, that uncomplicates torsos. it a little bit. Dan, can you message Nick and I, next I genuinely merch don't think. Oh, okay, hold on. I don't actually want to squeaky yeah. wheel this let's, if it's going to no. cause issues. Yeah, let's, no, no, no. Well, let's, the audience wait, 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 wait. is squeaky wheeling it. Let's pause here for sure. a second because we're cool with this. 
but I pretty much guarantee you, you'll release some shirt that people really like and it won't have a tall option and then people will go nuclear. It might literally not be worth it. That's okay. We'll start with black. Okay. Yeah. Message Nick. Let's get the, let's get the grading done, which is the, what it's called when you do all the different sizes and, uh, we'll, we'll start with something relatively that's uh, not a bad idea safe. if it's like very clear this is the only one we're doing right now because then you might be able to get a good idea of the distribution sure. no not really you could uh, you could write yeah, you will. small you'll market get segment on interest. the chest you'll get some ideas yeah. yeah nick is already messaging me apparently oh. all right hi nick i'm sorry nick uh maybe yeah i just got excited i'm so sorry nick uh I what else a shirt that fits me man i know uh sure this one is yeah, there he is. Uh, hey, lads, if Dan's birthday were ever to coincide with the WAN show, would you consider swapping Linus or Luke's role during the show with Dan? Curious to see what chaos that would bring. I wonder who curated this. <coughs> I didn't curate it. Actually, I did. Okay. <laughs> um, I potentialed it. No, I left it in incoming because I wasn't that sure. I think the WAN show is perfect the way it is. I, I, I love Dan. And if you guys want to hang out with Dan, sometimes he's on the pre-show for pretty extended periods of time and we'll hang with Luke. And if you're on float plane, then you can check that out over there and some of the past VODs. Um, oh, sorry, one sec. <laughs> this is important. Cool. Nice. Um, but if anything, if it was Dan's birthday and I wanted to do something special for him, I might tell him, how about you don't have to do a show today? Maybe that would be more special. But then he'd realize it was a trick and I was just trying to get him to be the one to end the streak. So I don't, I don't really know how it would all go down. Maybe Dan should just address this. I uh, Everything Linus said, but I want to work on my birthday. So. so you do or you don't? I do, yeah. Oh, yeah. all right. It's a good birthday present. I get to hang out with you guys. Yeah, birthday Aww. present. Paycheck. Aww. <laughs> Money. Hey, Dan, happy birthday. I got you money. <laughs> That's what I wanted. <laughs> Yay. I was extra late today, so you got a bunch of overtime. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen my family in months. Thanks, I guess. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's fine. Yeah, oh, no, man. it's fine. Uh, let's see. What else we got here? Um, hey, Dan and the talent. This order will take my lifetime over a thousand dollars. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Will. Thanks. Do you have data? Sorry, I mean, Simon. <laughs> do, do you have data on which countries spend the most on merch? Any surprises? Any overrepresented demographics? Largest whale. Thanks. Almost certainly USA. USA. Um, I can check that, though. I think. I don't really dig into the analytics on this too often, but give me. It's give like me definitely a, USA. Yeah, give me a Seki boo here. Um, Luke, do you want to do the next one while I see if I can figure this out? I mean, sure. Sure. Is sure. there any? Yeah. Uh, here, this one. Uh, I work at a semiconductor fab, and our facilities brought a, uh, they, sorry, they bought a lot of screwdrivers to give out, as apparently they're clean room approved, oh. which is sick. Really? It's kind of surprising to me with the moving parts. Yeah, exactly. Oh, but the plastics, because you could you can open it up and you can blow it down and stuff. But it would be it would be more down to the materials that they wouldn't shed. And no, it shouldn't. Um, That's cool. cool. That's uh, super cool. Is but, there any interest in touring another fab? Uh, it's not as great as Intel, though. It is a semiconductor fab, though. Yeah, that might be cool because they have lots of different types of. It depends. We're always looking for something new that we can show to our audience. You'd have to show stuff that... You'd have to show us something bigger. Yeah. Uh, and, and bigger doesn't necessarily mean more expensive. Bigger could mean, you know, get you us up close more. and personal. Yeah. It, it would need to be something that isn't already freely out there. Yeah. Basically. We have to bring something new. But, sick idea. Just good luck getting approval. Uh, LL and D. I recently replayed Vanquish and Binary Domain. Which one do you prefer? I've never heard of either I don't know of what them. either of these things are. I also had never heard of them. Okay. Sorry. I'm so <laughs> sorry. Vanquish game. Thanks for all you do. I think I remember the Seddon Twins being mentioned before, and I wanted to know if any of you had any hockey stories, favorites, or hot takes besides Super Checks. 
Did you seriously just pronounce them Seddon twins? The, sorry, the, the Seddon twins. Sedin. It doesn't, it doesn't have the umlau. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, um, answer the question. <laughs> any hockey stories? Uh, no, I just really wow. love watching hockey. I never was good at it or really played it or anything. Um, I was really into the sport back when, um, back when Yvonne and I were like still living with her parents and stuff. It wasn't until the lockout around that time that I kind of went, okay, yeah, forget it. I, I'm, I'm kind of tired of cheering for corporation A versus corporation B. It just doesn't really make sense to me anymore. Um, and to be clear, I, that doesn't mean that I'm, that I don't get why people watch sports. There's a thousand reasons to watch sports, just the, the humanness of it, uh, the storylines, the, the, the people honestly is the biggest one. Conversation. Yeah. It, the conversation, just cultural participation, just the love of the game. I mean, man, I, it's mesmerizing to me. It drives Yvonne crazy. If I'm, if I'm at a, if I'm at a restaurant, like even though I don't follow it anymore, I mean, I know the Canucks are having a great season. I know, you know, who the major players are on the team. Like, I follow it peripherally still. And if the game's on, I'm, like, glued to it. But I just I, I, just, I just don't really have, like, time anymore. And that combined with, you know, my feelings about, you know, the lockout. And I, I, there are things that I find uncomfortable about professional sports in general, the way that the athletes are sort of treated like livestock. Um, on the one hand, yeah, sure, they're compensated well. But on the other hand, sometimes they're not. Um, you know, college sports. Um, there's some some college sports they're treated well now. They is that true? They is that improving? Yes, some of them. Okay. Um, yeah, not all, for a long time it was like completely banned for them to make any money, <sighs> like basically at all from anything. They couldn't take any sponsors. They couldn't do. Uh, yeah, it was it was pretty intense. Um, and now that's not a thing. I think for football players, I don't. I don't know. I don't know a lot about it. I just know some things have changed. Uh, I have a bunch of great hockey stories. I played pr pretty high level. I played provincial level. Like we, I played on BC's team for ball hockey for a few years. Um, and I have fun stories. My two favorite ones. They're both pretty short. Uh, one, my brother came back from playing football. Uh, in the States for a university in the States and he came back and it was a like a hockey game that that happened like immediately when he came back so he's still in football mode and one of the kids crossed their feet right in front of them that was on the other team and he, that's just like a <laughs> I've talked to Linus about this before that's like a you hit now indicator basically and Rich just flattened up and then immediately got up didn't even wait for the ref just walked to the penalty box immediately it was just like yep <laughs> I, like apparently like mid movement he was like oops and just knew he screwed up and was like, yeah, I, uh, I'm ejecting myself, um, which was funny. Uh, another one, my brother was refing one of my games. And the other team was kind of understandably unhappy about this, but it was what it was. There was only so many refs. My brother and I both refed. It was somewhat inevitable. It would happen eventually in, in one direction or the other. Um, <clears throat> and they were kind of chirping. About, oh, okay. Okay. Um, they were complaining about it. <laughs> uh, they were complaining about it for most of the game. And then um, I like hit someone. Someone was uh, slashing my, my shins a bunch and stuff and they were pissing me off. Then I hit them into the boards pretty hard and we were dogpiling a little bit. And my brother ran up to the dog pile and he, my, this was, this was prime football player, Richard. Richard's a big, very strong guy all the time, but this was like, Omega Richard and he walked up to me grabbed the back of my jersey and actually threw me like I caught air significantly through the uh, floor of the the ball hockey arena I went flying it was like <laughs> crazy and for the entire rest of the game the whole other team was like it's, it's cool it's fine we don't mind that he's refing this game seems like he'll be fair about things <laughs> I was like yeah cool all right we're good um, okay, I am yeah. working on this. I can't get a revenue number, um, but I have sessions converted, which I think is basically people reach checkout and buy something, right? So I can get an order number, like how many orders. So now I just need to put in a date range. Is there like a lifetime? Um, they don't let you do that because that would be really hard on the servers, I guess. But I'm just going to put in 
2018 to present. Oh, crap. I clicked the wrong thing. Um, I can already tell you guys that it's going to be... USA. Yeah, a converted, USA. a converted session, to be clear, is not just someone who like adds something to a cart or shows significant interest, but it's someone who adds something to their cart, proceeds to check out, and actually does purchase the items. Yeah. This is going to take a minute. I just asked for five years of Shopify data. <laughs> Which for our store is a non-trivial amount of transactions. Is this where they email it to you? No. Is this that one? No, no, it'll it'll do a thing. Okay. Yeah, give it a sec. It's just it's it's a working on it. Okay. All right. Uh United States is at about eight times Canada, which is about double the UK which is a little higher than Germany, which is a little higher than Australia, which is about double the Netherlands, which is about double Norway, which is about the same as Sweden, which is about the same as Switzerland, which is a little more than Denmark, which is about the same as Austria, which is about the same as France, which is a little more than Belgium, which is about the same as New Zealand, and a little more than Israel, and then it kind of goes on from there and you know, kind of trickles off. So yeah, the United States is... Um, over half of our sales, which I don't think would be a big surprise to anyone. The United States is 40% of our viewership. So, yeah. Um, and then, you know, the proximity, right. And the, and the shipping challenges with shipping overseas, it makes sense that they'd be overrepresented for, for customers that actually purchase something from us compared to just watch the videos. I'm not shocked. Australia is so high. Um, v Vicus, uh, Australia, they've, they've like always been our bros. I, I think yeah. it's ever since we moved WAN show or did we move WAN show because we knew we had Australian viewers. I can't remember which came first, but there's a, there's a huge tech community in Australia yeah. considering how few people live there and how few of them have internet apparently. <laughs> I, I kid, I kid. I mean, your internet is, it, it's shit, but like, <laughs> I shouldn't tease. I shouldn't tease. <laughs> That's it? That's all I got? Oh, you wanted the largest whale, though. Ah. Uh -huh. Hold on. I don't know if I can find that. Um, oh, this might be easier than I thought. Add filter. Orders placed. Products purchased. Amount spent. Hello? Okay, is greater than... Oh, I can put a value. Uh, what value should I put? I have no idea. I mean, someone's probably bought a batch of stuff for their like company. Would that have been through Shopify or would that have been through I've, contacting? I've, I don't know, dude. Do like, holy shit. Okay. So I put in over 2000 and I found buddy who spent almost nine grand. I was going to say, you should put it at nine grand. Actually. I wonder if there's anyone over. Oh, anyone over 9,000. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's, um, there's, I'm assuming these are, cause I, I've talked to people that are like, oh yeah, I like outfitted my whole shop of like many workers with screwdrivers or, um, my, my company has a lot of people like going out on the road and doing things. So I got everyone backpacks or whatever else. So I yep. think there's a lot of like corporate level purchases that have gone through. Um, yeah, there's there's a handful of people around the about 10 grand range. That's very surprising to me, but um so I mean not crazy just cuz the corporate purchases that I've heard about, that's I it. I think buying all for yourself <clears throat> that doesn't really make any sense, but yeah. if you gift a lot or if you're buying things for work, I mean, I've seen spikes in um in screwdrivers where like just one person buys 100 in a day. So yeah. it's like that's that's it's a add freaking up. lot of money, right? Yeah. Um, that's, you know, six grand, seven grand on one purchase. Uh, oh, Nick just sent me an image. He goes, uh, I'm pretty sure the top person is reselling. Oh. Yeah. There is some of that. Yeah, that makes sense. Someone linked me to a, yeah, a, like scalper of, I think it was stubby screwdrivers. Well, it might not necessarily be scalping or as not, much as it yeah. is reselling into regions where yeah, the so first they, party they, option they, might not be available. Buy a sig oh. Because we don't, to my knowledge, do much in the way of volume discounts to anyone. So they're, they're not, and, and like the products are just available from our store. Does shipping scale? 
Uh, they would, they would get a deal on shipping, I guess. So if they lived somewhere where their shipping rates are way more reasonable to send out, then maybe they could take advantage of that compared to our own pricing. But yeah, hard I to, saw a hard link. I don't know if it was like, or not a link. I saw a picture, which is why I'm going to say this part. I don't know if it was like shopped or edited or not or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it was a, a stubby that was selling for well over two hundred dollars. That I had saw that sales. I think. Yeah, I saw that. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't sure. I guess. No idea. You, you no. know what? I have an idea of that. It's time to end the show. We didn't make it. We'll see you again next week. I didn't want to make it. I didn't want to get over midnight. See you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Bye. Bye. There, I did it properly. You happy now? I'm very happy. Good. I'm a happy, happy, happy person. I can't believe we kept these things on all show. I thought for sure someone would stop me. Nobody messaged. <laughs>